This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. Umpires have just moved in the direction of home plate along with the managers, Roy Hartsfield and Jeff Torborg. And we'll be back to tell you about the umpiring lineup for this second game. And today's second game will be underway in just a moment. Hey, about time you got here. Can't lay another foot of track till we unload your flat cars. Help yourself. And there's a mail pouch for you back in the caboose. Oh, that'll have my tobacco in it. Hank, tell the men I got some real fine leaf tobacco for chewing. Came in the mail pouch. The men who want to share line up at the caboose. Hey, you others, get these barrels of spice off the flat car. The story of a great American tradition. Mail pouch chewing tobacco. Mail pouch was America's first brand of leaf tobacco. And it's been pleasing men ever since. That's because mail pouch has its own special one-of-a-kind flavor that comes from over 90 years experience in giving tobacco chewers what they want. A clean, fresh taste that's not too strong, but isn't too sweet either. A flavor that really lasts and satisfies a man all day long. So if you haven't tried mail pouch lately, chew a few packs and taste the mail pouch difference. You'll see why it's become a tradition to chew mail pouch and treat yourself to the best. The day is done. The time to let it go. It's the moment to unwind. So just say, bird. And for the king of men. And settle back. And be yourself. No matter what you do. No matter when or where. You know, a glass of blood is like an easy death when you bid birth Yeah, that's right. There's nothing like getting home, especially when there's a cold can of bud waiting for you. When you bid birth you get it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. This is Three Double J, Central Ohio's home of the Cleveland Cavaliers, Browns, and Indians. WWWJ, Johnstown. Steve Palamo at second, the third base umpire is Don Denkinger. In the National League on the scoreboard at Chicago this afternoon, it rained at the beginning of the game, but they finally got started. They are into the bottom half of the third inning. Phillies lead the Cubs 2 to nothing. Ruthman against Holtzman in that one. And Jose Cardinal came back to haunt his former teammates with his second home run of the year in the third inning with a man on. Both Jose's home runs have come against the Cubs. St. Louis playing in Montreal. The Cardinals came up with four runs in the sixth inning. And going into the eighth inning now, it's St. Louis five and Montreal four. New York's at Pittsburgh. We don't know what's happened there. We've heard nothing on that ball game, whether it's raining or whatever. At any rate, we've had no information. San Francisco Giants are playing in Atlanta. It is the Giants 4, Atlanta 5. Atlanta scored four times in the fifth inning. They've taken a 5-4 to four lead. Vita Blue started. Apparently, he's still in there. Phil Nico started, and he's still around. The Dodgers are in Cincinnati. It is raining at the end of the fourth inning, the game being delayed, with the Cincinnati Reds leading it 3-2. to two. San Diego at Houston. It's Houston 1, San Diego nothing. That's only one inning. In the American League, New York is entertaining the Tigers for a doubleheader. Yankees came up with two in the seventh inning, and they have tied the Tigers at two. Roseman started. Gidry is going for the Yankees, and Hiller has come on for the Tigers in the seventh inning. Jason Thompson's had a home run in that one. Chicago White Sox at Minnesota. It is the White Sox leading in that game 9-5, to five, and the White Sox are batting in the ninth inning. Make it 8-5, to five, White Sox. Now, Rodney, Smalley... And Rivera have home in that ball game. Baltimore scheduled to play Boston, and the Reigns came. That game wins. Kansas City in Oakland. No score at the end of one. Later on, Texas and California, and Milwaukee at Seattle. And here in Toronto, the Indians took the open at 2 to nothing. Jefferson ready to go. Joe Tate ready to go. And here he is to tell you that it's still a beautiful day for baseball as Jesse Jefferson throws the fastball. Strike one by Jimmy Norris. Norris, a left-hand batter, one for four in the series with a run score. Jimmy now hitting at 263 
has one homer and 14 runs batted in. He slaps the ball up in the air to center field and waiting for it as Bassetti makes the one-hand grab, one out. Norris flies to center field, one away, and it brings on Rick Manning. Manning in the first game went one for three, doubled homer run. Rick now hitting at 260. Well, let's wait till they put it up there. Manning in the series now three for 12 with an RBI and a run scored. He's hitting 262. Pitch to Rick, bounces it right back to McKay. Second baseman with the ball, throws on to first, two out. Two up and two away very quickly. Manning with two homers and 23 RBIs. And here's Johnny Grubb. Grubb in the first game went 0 for 4. He's now 0 for 5 in the series. John hitting at 232. Has seven homers and 26 runs batted in. Wind up by the right-hander and the pitch. And Grubb swings and misses strike one. Mayberry at first, McKee at second, Johnson at short, Howell at third, an outfield of Upshaw, Bossetti, and the right fielder is Hutton. And the pitch to Grubb is a strike of the knees, strike two. Jesse Jefferson with a good fastball. He's pretty much over the top. And he has one of the better fastballs on this ball club. Also a pretty good overhand curve, which occasionally has trouble controlling. Pitch to Grubb, fastball low, one ball, two strikes. Look for the sign by the right-hander, Jesse Jefferson. And the pitch to Grubb. Hits a foul fly out of play to the left to the count of still one and two. Gionasa coaching a third. Rocky Calavito at first. Second game just getting underway after a very fine pitching performance in the opener. Here's the pitch. Low. Two balls, two strikes. Yankees with a run in the eighth beat the Tigers three to two. Gidry the winner. Gidry is now 13 and 0. Pitch a fastball inside a full count on Johnny Grubb three and two. That's not a bad sum his work and he's only halfway finished. 13 and 0. Wind up by the right-hander. The payoff pitch, and Grubb pops it foul. Third base side. Wynn going to give this one a blowback into the chairs. And the count is still three and two. It's going to be Slayton against Rages in the uh, second game. R-A-J-S-I-C-H. Must have just called him up. He may be the fellow that's replaced. That's the Smith, huh? Yeah. Here's the pitch to Johnny on the 3-2 pitch. He pops another one foul. Ashby flips the mask away back at the screen and gets it. Three up, three down as Grubb fouls to the catcher. And at the end of one half inning of play, Cleveland nothing, Toronto coming to bat. It's definitely different. It's differently exciting. It's the kind of club you wish you'd known about sooner. Marco Polo, the super disco for people over 21, with a finest selection of current music and a sound system unconditionally guaranteed to shake your senses and your soul. Every Wednesday night is ladies' night, and happy hour lasts all day. Marco Polo, 1605 West 5th Avenue in Columbus, across from North Star. Here's some great news for people who like to know they've made a smart buy. At Victor Dodge in Columbus, we've got the stylish 1978 Dodge Diplomat for just $47.95. That's right, a luxurious Diplomat, not $67,000, just $47.95. Diplomatically speaking, that's a smart buy. This time, instead of Chevy or Ford, pick out a mind changer. The new favorite, Diplomat, for just $47.95. See you soon at Victor Dodge, a Columbus tradition at $5,100. East Main Street. Gossage picked up a save for the Yankees in that first game in Detroit, coming on in the ninth inning of play. This is ninth of the year. Well, Dave Frasleben is pitching for the Cleveland Indians here in the second game. Dave after a very rocky debut, we'll go against Bossetti, Upshaw, and Howell.
Right-hander Rick Bossetti was 0 for 4 in the first game. He's 2 for 12 in the series with two runs batted in, hitting at 278. Has two homers, 22 RBIs. First pitch, he slaps a foul to the right side. That one's going to be over just beyond the first base dugout. Strike one. Thornton at first, Kuiper at second, Blanks at short, Bell at third, Grubb in left, Manning in center, Norris in right. The catcher is Alexander, and on the mound, Dave Freisleben. Right-hander looks in, Bassetti with a strike one count, having fouled off the first pitch. Wind up. 0-1 pitch, Bossetti looked like he was going to bunt and took a strike, strike two. Fries Laban ready to work again. Right-hander deals, Bossetti slaps another foul out of play to the right of the counter, still strike two. The Indians are now back to within a game of the Detroit Tigers, ending the outcome of the second game here and in New York. Pitch to Bassetti, high fly ball to right field. Norris waiting under it, makes the catch, one out. Dave Freislevin gets his first American League out. And his earned run average drops from infinity to 135. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't funny. No. <laughs> Willie Upshaw left hand batter, hitting 274, one over 11 RBIs. Upshaw ran in the first game. He is 0 for 4 in the series. Wind up by Fries Laban on the pitch to the left hand batter. Strike one of the knees. Fries Laban gets the sign from Alexander. Winds up with a strike one pitch to the left hand batter. It's high and outside. One ball, one strike. Next pitch, low, fastball, and the count is two and one. Roy Howell, the third baseman on deck. No score in the home half of the first inning, the second game. Pitch to Willie, rides high, three balls at a strike, up shot, 274. Harry Warner coaching at third, Jackie Moore on the first base side. 3-1 pitch. Bouncing ball up the middle. Kuiper, the second baseman, has it. Throws to first. He is out. Two down. Two away in the first inning of play. Roy Howell, third baseman, hitting a 291. Howell with four homers and 40 RBIs. One for nine in the series with a run bat in. Three runs scored, and he went 0 for 3 in the first game. Oh, it is a long day for the Chicago Cubs. Phillies now leading six to nothing in the fourth inning of play. Should have rained. Here's the pitch. Howell takes one inside, ball one. It did, but it stopped. <laughs> that's, that's, where it that's where things went wrong. <laughs> pitch. Howell takes the fastball low, and the count is 2-0. Oh. Well, Prize Lehman's earned run average has now dropped to 67.47. Not bad for two-thirds of an inning of work. Dave looks in and gets the sign. Wind up. And the pitch. Howell wraps it down to the first baseman. Grabbed by Thornton. Runs to the bag. Three up, three down. No runs, no hits, no errors. And Fries Laban's earned run average at 45. And going down, which is good news. The end of one inning of play. The score, Cleveland nothing, Toronto nothing. There's only one place where you can get professional, high-quality printing and reasonable prices. And that's Shin Graphics at Graphic Way in Westerville. Shin will be pleased to take care of any wedding invitations and accessories. And for all orders over $75, you get a 15% discount. For instant printing at Shin, it normally will take less than two hours. Shin Graphics at Graphic Way in Westerville can take care of any of your printing needs, from calendars to calling cards, or even a doctoral thesis. See Jim Shin today at Shin Graphics. Here's some great news for people who like to know they've made a smart buy. At Victor Dodge in Columbus, we've got the stylish 1978 Dodge Diplomat for just $47.95. 
That's right. A luxurious diplomat, not $67,000, just $47.95. Diplomatically speaking, that's a smart buy. This time, instead of Chevy or Ford, pick out a mind changer. The new favorite, Diplomat, was at $47.95. See you soon at Spitzer Don, a Columbus tradition at 5100 East Main Street. Second inning, Alexander Thornton and Carbo will test right-hander Jesse Jefferson. Alexander had the game winner in the first game when he slugged his 16th home run of the year in the second inning with nobody on. He went one for four. And he's now four for 12 in the series with that home run and three runs scored. Gary is hitting 231, 16 homers, and 40 RBIs. Alexander with three game-winning hits for the Indians in the course of a week. Gary, however, with the two strikeouts in the first game, has spanned 83 times in 76 games. That pace, however, not as fast with the Tribe as it was with Oakland. That's right. Jefferson looking in. Here's the first pitch to Alexander, a fastball, strike of the knees, strike one. White Sox hung on to beat Minnesota in the first of a doubleheader, 8-5. to five. The pitch is a strike again at the knees, strike two. Jefferson looks in. Odds. Winds up the 0-2 pitch to Alex. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. First strikeout for Jesse Jefferson. He has now worked 105 and two-thirds innings. That was his 44th strikeout. He's walked 42. He has worked more innings than any other member of the Blue Jays. He one start against Cleveland. They knocked him out of the sixth inning. The first baseman, number 20. Andre Thornton, the first baseman. Andre 1 for 12 in the series after going 0 for 4 in the first game. Pops a fly ball into short left center. They're converging on it, and Bossetti makes the grab. Two out. And he came into the second game hitting 260 with 12 homers and 41 RBIs. And with two away and nobody on, Bernie Carbo will be the batter. Left hand the batting the eight. Bernie Carbo. Bernie 1 for 3 in the first game, a double to the ninth. He is now hitting a 271, one homer, and eight runs batted in. Bernie had a walk with the bases loaded the other day for an RBI. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Fastball low, ball two. Jefferson starting out as though he is going to be very, very tough. He's coming off a couple of pretty good wins. Wind up. 2-0 pitch. Carbo takes outside. Ball three. Wind up on the 3-0 pitch to Bernie. That's high. Ball four. Well, he walked Carbo on four pitches. And that will bring to bat Buddy Bell, the third baseman. Buddy making his first appearance in a week. Singled once in four trips in the first game. His batting average at 310. He has three homers and 30 runs batted in. All right hand batting third baseman, Dwayne Kuyper on deck. A stretch by Jefferson. Pitch to Buddy. Bell wraps it down the third base line. Grab by Howell behind the bag. Long throw. He's in time with the toss to retire the sun. No runs, no hits, a walk, and a man left. And at the end of an inning and a half, it is Cleveland at nothing, Toronto nothing. The day is done. It's time to let it go. It's the moment to my So gently, bud. And for the king of men, and settle back. And to please yourself, no matter what you do, no matter when or where, you know a glass of blood 
is like an easy chair when you did first Hey, that's right. Nothing goes with that special time you call yours like the clean, fresh taste of Budweiser. When you say Budweiser, you say oh, and I the bush thing to it. Most of the pitchers for the second game at Minnesota, Ron Schuler will be pitching for the Chicago White Sox. And Daryl Jackson will be pitching for the Minnesota Twins. Gene Mark had a few more gray hairs, obviously, in that first game as the Twins committed five errors in losing to the White Sox 8-5. to five. Here's Rico Cardi in the home half of the second inning, right-hand batter. Rico, the DH in the first game, was 0-3 for 3 with a walk. He is now hitting 289. Cardi with 11 homers and 44 RBIs, and the first pitch is low ball one. Dave Freisleben put him away one, two, three in the tie up in the home half of the first inning. 1 0 pitch to Cardi. Rico swings and fouls it back out of play, and the count is even at one and one. John Mayberry and Tommy Hutton to follow. Kansas City and Oakland. Playing the first of two in Oakland. No score at the end of three. Gora against Langford. Wind up by Friesleben. Pitch to Rico. Low and inside. Two balls and a strike. Indians won the first game today. Two to nothing. Combined three hitter for Waits and Kern. Kern came on to get the final out. 2-1 pitch. Rico swing and a miss. Two balls. Two strikes. Alexander hit his 16th home run on the first game. And Rick Manning doubled in the other run. Fries Laban ready with a 2-2 pitch. Takes a long look. And the 2-2 offering to Rico slaps it back to Kuiper on the bounce. Dwayne digs it up, throws the first. One out of the second inning. John Mayberry, the first baseman, was a pinch hitter. He flied to left field to end the ball game and was his only at bat of the first game. He's now two for five in the series, but he's walked three times. Big John hitting 257 with 13 homers and 42 runs batted in. Look at Kuiper. He is back in right field. He is playing short right field. Blanks with that three-man shift. Looks like the way out man in a softball game. That's right. Bell playing well back at third. Might prompt Mayberry to try and bunt. He doesn't look like it. Takes the first pitch, a curve, strike one. Tommy Hutton on deck. Brian Slavin ready. Pitch, Mayberry takes low and outside. One ball, one strike. Boy, are they having a wild one in Atlanta today. Pitch, swing, and a miss. Pulled the string, and the count is one and two. Giants came up with three runs in the top of the seventh to take a seven to five lead, and Atlanta just came back with four more to take a nine to seven lead at the end of seven innings play. Great, giving the Giants fits. Friesleben cranks up the one-two pitch to Mayberry. Head high fastball, two balls, two strikes. No score, second inning, second game. The pitch, Mayberry bounces one off his foot. Goes to Blanks, the shortstop, but it is a foul ball. And Mayberry doing some hobbling at home plate. Milwaukee going for a sweep at Seattle sends Caldwell to the mound this afternoon. He will be opposed by Dick Pohl. Well, Mayberry back in after giving a little exercise to that bruised foot. 2-2 pitch, low and outside, full count of 3-2. and two. 
Indians play Mirabary around to the right side, and the right fielder Norris is within two steps of the warning path. Here comes the payoff pitch to Mayberry. High pop fly ball, center field. Manning cruising over to straightaway center and makes the catch. Two out for the second inning. Brings out Tommy Hutton, the right fielder. Tommy hitting 248, two homers, eight runs batted in. 0 for 2 in the series with one run scored. The right fielder, number 14. Indians come home after the second game here today and will be in Cleveland tomorrow night for a family night game at 735 and the big fireworks 4th of July contest at 735 on Tuesday. Baltimore rained out today in their game with Boston. Wind up by the right-hander and the pitch to Hutton. Low ball one. Tommy previously with the Phillies and Friesleben with the Padres, so they probably have faced each other a time or two. 1-0 pitch. There's a pop-up out over the mound. Coming on behind the mound is Buddy Bell. Makes the grab in the air, and the side is retired. 1-2-3. At the end of two innings of play, Cleveland nothing, Toronto nothing. You know, listening to Major League Baseball on 3WJ is a great way to follow the national pastime. But to really appreciate the game and the players' talents, at least once in a while, you should see a game in person. And those of us at 3WJ would like you to see the exciting Cleveland Indians on us during our Tribe Ticket Giveaway. All you have to do is send us your name, address, and phone number. And every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during the noon news, we'll draw a name to win two tickets to an Indians home game of your choice. If your name is drawn, your ticket's going to the mail that same day. And we won't stick you out in the left field bleachers, but in box seats, so you'll be right next to the action. To enter, send your name, address, and phone number on a postcard or letter to Tribe Tickets. 3WJ, P.O. Box 373, Johnstown, Ohio, 43031. Again, that's Tribe Tickets. P.O. Box 373, Johnstown, Ohio, 43031. To win two box seat tickets to a Cleveland Indians baseball game of your choice. Entries are limited to one per week, so enter today and let 3WJ take you out to the ball game. Look at another final score in the first of two at Montreal. The St. Louis Cardinals with that four-run sixth inning used it to hold off the Montreal Expos. 5-4, to four. Vukovic gets the win. Buddy Schultz picks up his fourth save. Took two hours and 40 minutes for the Cardinals to win, and they have now won five out of their last six ball games. And as I say, that is the first of a doubleheader. This is the second game of the doubleheader in Toronto, and the Indians won the first game 2 to nothing. Rick Waits and Jim Kern combining on a three-hit shutout. Wayne Kuyper will lead it off in the third inning for the Cleveland Indians. Kuyper, a left-hand batter. Wayne in the first game went one for three. He's hitting 259. No homers, 17 RBIs, and he is four for 11 in the series. Pitch to Dwayne. Low, ball one. Manning extended that hitting streak of his in the first game to eight games in a row. And Kuyper's now hit safely in 14 of his last 16 games. Fastball strike for the knees. One ball, one strike. Kuyper, Blanks, and the top of the order, Norris. Jesse Jefferson, the right-hander, wheels and deals, and Kuyper slaps a little looper on into left field. That's going to drop for a base hit. No Kuyper singles, and the Indians have a man on, leading off here in the third inning of play. Kuyper obviously in the good groove now, as he will tell you, and the base hits come, they come that way on drives into left field, and that time he swung nicely and served the ball into left field for a single. That'll bring on Larvell Blanks. Larvell sat out the opener. He's hitting 222 with 12 runs batted in. Blanks is 0 for 1 in this series, but he does have a run batted in and a sacrifice fly. Number 9 man in the tribe order, and they're looking for the bunt. Stretch, Blanks to bunt, does out in front of the plate. Ashby out, pounces in the ball. Double pump, throw to first, and they just oh, got him. Man, and here I don't comes, know about that. Here comes That's the argument. Boy. Boy, oh boy, that was, well, close enough to warrant the argument that is now going on. Say, second baseman, McKay was late getting there. Ashby had the ball, but no place to throw it. The sacrifice for Blanks, Jeff Torborg and Rocky Calavito have both chewed on the ear of the first base umpire, Larry McCoy, obviously to no avail, but 
Mm. That's going to bring on Jimmy Norris. Norris hit a fly ball to center field in the first inning. The right fielder, number 27, Jim Norris. Runner at second base and one out. Stretch by Jefferson and the pitch to Norris. Jim takes a fastball, strike one. No score in the top of the third. The Indians have a runner at second base and one out. Stretching the pitch, fast ball outside. One ball, one strike. Kuiper at second base. Looking for the sign by Jesse Jefferson. Here's the stretch. One one pitch. Norris hits a looper foul to the left into the seats. One ball, two strikes. Top of the third, the game is scoreless. Indians won the opener two to nothing behind Waits and Kern. Waits now six and eight, an earned run average of 2.34. And Kern picks up his seventh save of the year. Look in for the sign. A stretch by Jefferson. One, two pitch. Norris takes strike three. And he fired the fastball right through the middle. Well, Norris watched it go by. Second strikeout for Jefferson, and it'll bring on Rick Manning. Manning bounced to the second baseman in the first inning. Kuiper still at second base, but now with two outs. Fielder, number 28, Manning. Manning hitting 261. Kuiper with his lead at second. The stretch by Jefferson. And the pitch to Manning. Rick takes way outside. Ashby diving to his knees to the left to flag it down. 1-0 and the count. Johnny Grubb on deck. Jefferson the stretch. Looks back to Kuiper. 1-0 pitch to Manning. Rick hits a very high pop-up. Third baseman Howell waiting right next to the bag. Goes back a step and makes the catch to retire the side. So in the third inning of play, it is no runs and a hit with a man left at second base. And at the end of two and one half innings of play, Cleveland nothing, Toronto nothing. If you're a commercial hog man, listen to this. Shipley Durack Farm now has a good selection of tested boars and gelts. Sonnery information is available on all boars and some of the gelts. The Shipley Durack Farm is located at 8086 Marion Road Northeast, and that's Route 657, south of US 62. There's a big sign in front. You can't miss it. But in case you do, call 745-2328 or 892-2991. Free delivery any place in Ohio satisfaction guaranteed. The Shipley Direct Farm is owned by the same people as Utica Mill and Supply Company. Here's some great news for people who like to know they've made a smart buy. At Spencer Dodge in Columbus, we've got the stylish 1978 Dodge Diplomat for just $47.95. That's right, a luxurious Diplomat, not $67,000, just $47.95. Diplomatically speaking, that's a smart buy. This time, instead of Chevy or Ford, pick out a mind changer. The new favorite, Diplomat, for just $47.95. See you soon at Spencer Dodge, a Columbus tradition at $5,100. East Main Street. Tucker Ashford is homered for San Diego in the fourth inning of play, his fifth of the year, and the Padres have climbed on top of Houston three to one at the end of five. Perry against Dixon last night, incidentally, those two teams split a twenty-nine doubleheader. Houston won the first game nine to two, and the Padres took the nightcap nine to three. Mark Wiley, who had a brief fling with the Minnesota Twins back in 75. Got a start last night in that second game in San Diego and pitched very well. He had relief help from Dennis Kinney. Dave McKay, left-hand batter. McKay in the first game went 0 for 3. is now 0 for 9 in the series with four strikeouts. Dave Friesleben looks him over. McKay hitting 251. Here's the pitch to him. Curve high, ball one. McKay has one homer and 22 runs batted in for the year. Lined up in the pitch, slapped on the ground into right field, a base hit. 
Well, McKay grounds a single into right field. That is the first hit off Braislevin. And it'll bring up Al Ashby, the switch hitting catcher. The catcher, number eight, Alan Ashby. Alan Ashby hitting 211, two homers, seven runs batted, and 0 for 3 in the series he caught in Friday night's game. Al from the left side, 210, from the right side, 222. Both of his homers as a lefty. Pops the butt up behind the plate, and Alexander turns, gallops back after a late start and made the catch. Made a pretty good play of that because the ball was butt, and he started out in the direction of fair territory. Didn't know where the ball was. Somebody yelled, he turned around and got back in a hurry. Ashby trying to sacrifice. Pops foul and out to the catcher. Jim Johnson, the shortstop. Johnson has been in two games, but this will be his first at bat on the series. He's hitting 200 with one run batted in. Hitting 219 with Toronto with that RBI. Started the year with Milwaukee and came over to the Blue Jays in a trade for Tim Nordbrook. Then Nordbrook got to Milwaukee on the very first game that he played. He injured his knee. Pitch low ball on And he is probably out for the year. Nerve damage, I believe. Right. Frasley been working with one out and one on in the third inning. Stretch by Dave and the pitch. Outside and high, ball two, two and oh. Infield of Thornton, Kuiper, Planks and Bell. And outfield left to right of Grubb, Manning and Norris. Alexander catching both ends of the double dip. And Frasley been on the mound. Throw to first base and back to the bag goes McKay. And a dandy pitcher's duel in the first game. Waits and Lamanchik with Kern helping in the ninth. Indians win it 2-zip. There goes the runner. The ball is slapped up in the air to center field. May set. McKay turns second, digging for third. Here comes the throw over. Not in time. And the Blue Jays are runners at first to the third with one out. Well, he had him going and it paid off. Second hit off Frasleben, and it will bring up the top of the order, Rick Bussetti. Bussetti hit a fly ball to right field in the first inning. Rick Bussetti. Stretch by the right-hander. Runners on the corners against him, and the first pitch, Bassetti reaches out and pokes a foul. Back out of play, strike one. Michael Segge, our traveling secretary, arriving in the booth. This full of tickets. Where are we? When are we leaving? When are we arriving, more importantly? When would you guess? About 9.50? Better you give us a time that'll be... No, you know, how long after the game do you figure? Pitch low and inside, 101. You'll come back and give us an estimate. One ball and one strike. Two on and one out here in the third. Prize Laban. The stretch. Dave throws. Bosetti stops his swing in time, and the count is two and one. Pitch was outside. McKay singled her right. Ashby fouled out trying to bunt and jump. Lap to single with the runner going, and now the Blue Jays have runners at first and a third. One out. Stretch by Fraze Laban, and the pitch. Outside again. Ball three, three and one. Fraze Laban is going to take a little hike around the mound. One out, top of the order. Bussetti at bat with Upshaw due to bat next. Stretch by Friesleben. And the 3 1 pitch. Posetti line drive, left field, solid hit. In the score from McKay. Now the second base goes Johnson, and it's a 1 0 Toronto lead. Jeff Dorborg trotting to the mound, and they're calling to the bullpen for a left hander. Don Hood running down out of the Indian dugout. Don Hood is going to be up and throwing. That is Bosetti's 23rd RBI of the year. First 
run and third hit off Bryce Lehman. Number 26, Willie Upshaw. Willie Upshaw bounced to the second baseman in the first inning. Looked for the sign by Price Laban. Two on against him and one out. Pitch to Upshaw. Low ball one. The stretch. Rise Lehman checks the runner at second. 1-0 pitch. Curveball high. Ball two. 2-0. Two Looks like Dave's just having trouble with that breaking pitch. He can't get that curveball down. Just can't really get through it. The pitch. Hit hard. Thornton backhands the ball. Going to go out to second base for the play at second. On Bossetti, over to third base goes Jansen. Nice play by Andy Thornton. Definitely, good play. 3-6 on the put out of Bossetti for the second out of the inning. Puts up shot first base with a fielder's choice. And will move Jansen to third. Roy Howell. Roy Howell. Howell bounces the first baseman unassisted. Pitch, foul ball, just over the top of the screen and back downstairs, strike one. Brian Slavin trying to wiggle out of a problem. Pitch, outside, fastball, one ball, one strike. Toronto has taken the lead. One to nothing here in the home half of the third inning. The pitch, that is high, two balls and a strike. Two on and two out. On deck is Rico Cardi. Stretch, two on pitch. High drive, left field. Drop toward the corner, getting under, makes the catch and the side is retired. And a prize Laban with some good defense behind him gets out of a jam with only one run scoring. One run on three hits with two men left. And at the end of three innings of play, it is Toronto 1, Cleveland nothing. One of the first things a newlywed couple should be looking into is insurance. Because marriage means responsibilities. Shaw Insurance of Utica will be happy to explain anything you may want to know about insurance. From auto to home, life, business, or whatever you may need. At Shaw Insurance, let them tell you about their six-month homeowner policies, perfect for newlyweds and retirees, but available to anyone. Call Darlene or Bob Shaw of Shaw Insurance for more information at 892-3891. That's 892-3891. 3WJ presents the Columbus Jackpot Program, with over $500 in gift certificates for you. A number of people are being called by telephone to receive this fantastic offer. You may be called today. $500 in gift certificates for only $24.95. If you can't wait for that call, phone 868-8595. That's 868-8595. The Columbus Jackpot. Rally. Giants ran a foul of Atlanta again today. Down in Atlanta in two hours and 14 minutes. Atlanta outscored San Francisco nine to seven with Phil Necro over Randy Moffat who was in relief of Vita Blue who was really pounded around today by the Atlanta Braves. Meanwhile, the Tigers and the Yankees are scoreless after two innings of their second game. The Yankees won the first game three to two. Oakland has taken a one to nothing lead on Kansas City at the end of four. Gora against Langford. Here it's inning number four, and Herb score. Thank you, Joe. The Indians, for the first time in this ball game, this day, actually find themselves trailing one to nothing. 
For the Indians grub, Alexander Thornton will see what they can do with Jesse Jefferson. Right in, winds it up. Here's his first pitch, a swing and a miss on the slider down at the knees, strike one. Grubb has fouled to the catcher his only time up in this game. Drive down the left field line, slicing foul out of play. Strike two. Johnny Grubb in the first game of this doubleheader went 0 for 4. Wind up by Jefferson. The pitch is a slider down too low. Ball one, strike two. Outfield straight away. Jefferson with that good overhand fastball. His slider's been pretty effective. Bouncing ball, second base side. McKay gets the big bounce. Fires. He gets grub at first. One up, one down. Inning number four. Gary Alexander, the batter. Gary. Gave the Indians their first run, the one they really only one they needed in the first game with a home run into the left field seat, his 16th of the year. First time up in this game, he went swinging. Then, 1 1 pitch, the foul back over the screen out of play, ball one strike two. I'm forgetting now, the Indians will be home Monday and Tuesday nights against Baltimore. They take a short journey to Detroit for two games. And then next weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the Boston Red Sox. Carl Jastrzemski, Jimmy Rice, Freddie Lennon group in town. Inside and high with a fastball, it's two and two. Friday night, Indians take on the Red Sox. Saturday is a twi-night doubleheader starting at 535. And then Sunday is bat day. Swing and a miss, strike three, fastball down around the knees. Two up, two down in the fourth inning for the Indians. That's the third strikeout for the right-hander. Here's Andre Thornton. Andre has been held in check pretty much in this series by the Blue Jays. First game, he was 0 for 4. He's 0 for 1 in this one. 1 for 12 overall. About time for him to break loose. Pitch to him has popped up. First base side foul. Over near the dugout is John Mayberry. He leans on top of the dugout, can't get it. Big John had that long reach, and he had the glove extended on top of the dugout and back about a foot, but just couldn't reach that ball. Herb, with that yellow line running in front of the dugout, is that one of those safety lines? Right. I think that if you, uh, I think as I'm sure of the ground rule, that he can't run in there and catch the ball. He has to remain outside that line. He can lean over it. He can't go in there. There's no dugout here per se. It's a shelter, but it's not dug down. Fastball up too high, ball one. Friday night at the stadium, we talked about the Red Sox coming in. It's post tonight. Fans receive a poster coming into the ballpark. Swing and a miss. Fastball down around the knees. One ball, two strikes. Jesse Jefferson really popping that ball. One ball, two strikes. Two men gone, fourth inning. Indians trail, one nothing. High pop, third base side. Foul territory, Howell in the coaching box. Third baseman waits, he makes the grab, and Jesse Jefferson has retired the last six men in a row. Three up, three down in the fourth inning. We go to the last half of the fourth inning to score. Toronto one, Cleveland nothing. Here's some great news for people who like to know they've made a smart buy. At Booksy Dodge in Columbus, we get the stylish 1978 Dodge Diplomat, which is $47.95. That's right, a luxurious diplomat, not $57,000, just $47.95. Diplomatically speaking, not the smart buy. This time, instead of Chevy or Ford, pick out a mind changer. The new favorite, Diplomat, which is $47.95. See you soon at Booksy Dodge, a Columbus tradition at $5,100. National Lampoon presents True Facts. Authentic, documented, we kid you not. 
strictly on the up and up, verified, absolutely the real thing, honest to goodness, unadulterated. And now let's go back to yours. Monday through Friday nights at 11.55, right here on 3WJ Mellow Rock 103. Last half of the fourth inning, Blue Jays one, Indians nothing. Blue Jays will be coming along with Rico Cardi, John Mayberry, and then Tommy Hutton. Dave Fry's leaving on the mound for the Indians. He gave up a run, two hits last inning. Incidentally, tomorrow night, the Indians will have their autograph booth open, 6.15 to 6.45. That's down in the concourse, I think, in section 11. The autograph booth will be Ted Cox and David Clyde at 615 to 645 tomorrow night, family night at the stadium. Here's Rico. First time up, a bouncing ball to the second baseman. Rico's batting average, 288. Dave Friesleben making his second start for the Indians. Right hander winds it up and he throws. Fastball over the inside part of the plate, waist high strike. Wind up, and the pitch. Ground ball, shortstop side. Lavell has it. Takes a couple of steps, fires across, and Rico is retired. 6-3 on the out, one man down, fourth inning. Big John Mayberry, flying to center field his first time up. He was a pinch hitter in the ninth inning with two men out, two men on for the Blue Jays. Kern came on the pitch, and he flying out the center. Actually, the left center, caught by Johnny Grubb. Buddy Bell goes to the mound. He's going to have a little chat with Dave Freisleben. They put the infield shift on. It's almost an outfield shift because the shortstop and second baseman are both in the outfield and both on the right side. Here it would appear all things going well. The Indians will be home between 9.45 and 10 o'clock tonight. Freisleben starts his windup, then stops as his foot flips on the pitching rubber. Indian traveling secretary Mike Sagey just came back to tell us that Indian charter flight won't arrive at late 30, so he thinks the earliest they can leave is 9 o'clock. That means they get home by 9.50. There's a strike at the knees. Strike right one. Time call. Jeff Torborg asking umpire Phillips for permission to go out and see Friesley. And he may have twisted his foot when he stopped that windup a while ago. Got a caught on the front part of the pitching rubber. So Jeff Tobo talking with him, and also Dave Phillips there to see what's going on. Count on Mayberry, strike one. I'm by Phillips also talking with Flies Lady. And while we wait for that conference to break up, let's pause for station identification. This is the Cleveland Indian Baseball Network. This is 3WJ, Central Ohio's home of the Cleveland Cavaliers, Clowns, and Indians. WWWJ, Johnstown. Five lane and ready to go. He says his foot's all right. One strike. Wind up and the pitch. Curveball breaks down too low. Ball one and a strike. Now, if Reislaven doesn't like the ball he gets, he wants another one. On deck is Tommy Hutton. Reislaven has given up three hits and a run. They all came in that third inning. Indians against Jesse Jefferson have had just one hit. Ground ball sharply hits the right side in the center field of base hit. Well, you know he hit it hard because they had Blank, Thornton, and Kuiper all on the right side. And both Blank and Kuiper were about... 15 feet into what would be the outfield, and neither one of them could get to it as drove in between them. Mayberry gets to hit the fourth for Toronto. Here's Tommy Hutton. Tommy popped up to the third baseman his only time up. Left-hand batter did not play in the first game. Outfield is playing him straight away. Right, Raven checks the runner, throws, fastball is a bit outside. Ball one. 
surprised Lavin looking in. He thought he might have had a strike. Dave McKay is on deck. The pitch. Flyer over the outside corner. It's a strike. One on one. On deck. McKay, he's got three of those lead donuts up on the barrel of the bat. One ball and a strike. Down too low. Two balls and a strike. Ball two, one strike. Tommy Hutton. Slightly closed stance. He's pretty well spread out. Mayberry at first. Thornton not holding against him. There he goes. Pitch a pitch out. Throw to second base. And they have him. Tag applied by Larvell Blank. And on the pitch, the batter Hutton threw the bat at the ball. It was a pitch out. And he had no way to reach the ball. So he just flipped the bat at it. And that'll be a strike. 2-6 on the court stealing. Two men down in the fourth inning. And Tommy Hutton with a count of two balls, two strikes. And he had the hit and run on, and the Indians figured that one out perfectly. Curveball breaks inside, three and two. See, the Indians guessed right on that, but it's an educated guess because what they do, they really try to pick up the opposing team's signs, and sometimes they get them. Fastball missed outside, ball four. Hutton takes the walk. Two men out. First walk in the game allowed by Freisleben. And here's the second baseman, Dave McKay. Don't forget, a week from today is bat day at the stadium. Very fine little league. Adirondack bats will be given away to all Indian youngsters, Indian fans. 14 under coming into the stadium that day, with the exception of those that come to the bleachers. Foul ball cuts to the left out of play. Sunday's bat day game time, 2.05. Red Sox currently leading Milwaukee by seven games in the Eastern Division. Milwaukee in second place, New York and Baltimore follow. One strike pitch, a pitch out, and they have him trapped between the second and first and second throw, and he is out. The funny thing about that, he was not going on the pitch, it was a delayed steal. And Hutton took about three steps and stopped about, oh, I'd say 15 feet off the bag at first, then he decided, I'll go anyway. And Gary Alexander fired down to second base, and they apply the tag. Lardo Blank tags him out. And so, Gary Alexander nails two base runners in the fourth inning. Blue Jays, no run. On a hit, no errors, and nobody left. And the four score. Toronto one, Cleveland nothing. Get around, folks. Get around. Like my sign says, it's Trader John's Traveling Emporium, the general store on wheels. Trader John's wagon has everything and the best of everything. Just smell this soap, little lady. <laughs> and for you, sir, hand tools, handguns, and the finest fresh chewing tobacco. That'll be mail pouch chewing tobacco, too. The story of a great American tradition, mail pouch chewing tobacco. Mail pouch was America's first brand of leaf tobacco, and it's been pleasing men ever since. That's because mail pouch has its own special one-of-a-kind flavor that comes from over 90 years' experience in giving tobacco chewers what they want. A clean, fresh taste that's not too strong, but isn't too sweet either. A flavor that really lasts and satisfies a man all day long. So if you haven't tried mail pouch lately, chew a few packs and taste the mail pouch difference. You'll see why it's become a tradition to chew mail pouch and treat yourself to the best. Indians and the Blue Jays, second game of the doubleheader. The Indians took the first one two to nothing behind Rick Waite with the last out help from Jim Kern. And in this one, Indians trail one to nothing. First four innings totals for the Blue Jays, a run on four hits. They have played airless ball. They've left two men on base. The Indians no runs on one hit, and they've left two and have played airless ball. 
Bernie Cabo, Buddy Bell, and Dwayne Kuyper coming along against Jesse Jefferson. He picks up that sack of Brazen, gives it a little working over, drops it down. Cabo walked his only time up. 271 batting average, left-hand batter. Big slow curve, stays high, ball one. Jefferson goes to the windup. Fastball is outside and high, 2-0. Oh. Drive to left center field. That's going to go for base hit. Over to cut it off. Is up short. Gets by him all the way to the wall. In the second base goes Bernie Carlo, his second double of the afternoon. He had one in the first game. Willie Upshaw tried to cut the ball off, and it took a bounce right by him. So the Indians with a runner at second, nobody out in the fifth inning, their second hit of the game. And the batter, Buddy Bell. Buddy wrapped the ground, I beg your pardon. It is Buddy. Buddy wrapped the ground ball to the third baseman. First time up in the first game, Buddy had a base hit in four times. Buddy playing his first games in a week. He has not played since last Sunday. He's had some spasms in his back. Jefferson throws, the curve is high and inside of all. Jesse Jefferson. Gives a look to the runner at second. Fast ball inside, 2-0. Indians trail 1-0, but they are threatening. Jefferson checks and throws. Inside, way inside, 3-0. Dwayne Kipe is on deck. He had a base hit his first time up. Three balls, no strikes. Jefferson backs off. Good crowd on hand here in Toronto this afternoon. Blue Jays have drawn very well. Fastball right through the middle. And you cannot expect any better weather than we've had this weekend. And wherever you are, we hope it's been a pleasant weekend. If you're traveling, drive carefully. The pitch. Inside, corner strike, three and two. Cincinnati Reds have looked at the Dodgers in the fifth inning. The Dodgers scored three times. They take the lead, five to three over Cincinnati. They had a rain delay of what, Joe, an hour and something? 56 minutes. 56 minutes. Line drive, center field, coming on. Bassetti reaches out. He makes the catch. That young man has made a couple of really good catches today. That time he went to his knees and grabbed it. Thinking line drive in center field, caught by Bassetti, holding a second as Carbo. And now it's Dwayne Kuyper. Kuyper had a base hit the left field his first time up. Dwayne's batting average up to 262. The second baseman, number 18, Dwayne Kuyper's now hit safely in 15 of his last 17 games. Bert Campanaris just was ejected at California for fighting with Ken Brett in the second inning. Looping foul back out of play. The suspicion there is that Mr. Brett came a little close to Burt. Strike one. Pitch, curve too low. Ball one on a strike. We probably should have come a little closer to Richie Zisk because Zisk just hit his 13th home run. Mm -hmm. One ball, one strike. Maybe that's when he came close to Camp after the home run. <laughs> right. One ball, one strike. And the pitch, up too high. Two balls and a strike. Jesse Jefferson and the Blue Jays leading one to nothing. One out in the fifth inning. The Indians with a runner at second. 
2-1 to Kuiper. Ground ball, foul, third base side. That one skipped right over the top of the dugout. In fact, it wasn't a ground ball. That thing was a line drive. Hit the top of the dugout, skipped back in the seats. Well, I would hate to be in front of that one. Well, a young lady was, and she has been hurt. Two balls, two strikes. Bernie Cabo on at second. He doubles. Buddy Bell lined to center. Now it's up to Twain Kuiper. Lavelle blanks on deck. Jefferson throws up high with a fastball. It's three and two. Apparently the young lady that was hit is okay. Three balls, two strikes. Ground ball, third base side foul. Takes a skip and goes off the front of the dugout. Count remains. Ball three, strike two. Jesse Jefferson back to that rosin bag. Gives it a going over. Jefferson, and looking at his record this year, he has made 14 previous starts and hurled five complete games. He leads the Blue Jays in the complete game department. 3-2 pitch. Line drive, left field, coming on his upshore, reaches down, dives, and gets the ball. Throw to second base, and they're going to double him up. Willie Upshore, who is not exactly the classic style outfielder, just made a whale of a play, a diving grab right up the top of the artificial turf. Carbo was the third base and had no chance to get back. So a line drive to left, and they double on Carbo 7-4. And he's in the fifth inning. Hit the ball hard enough to get a run, but they don't. No run. One hit, no errors, and nobody left. Middle of five, the score. The Cleveland Indians, nothing. The Toronto Blue Jays won. This is Dave Smith at the Fairfield Ford on Broad Street. We're halfway between Columbus and Newark. We sell new Ford. We will save you money. In fact, we have a little statement we make. If you can't save you money on a new Ford, I'll buy you two steak dinners. And we don't buy very many steak dinners. So come on over and see us. We've got a fine selection right now. New and used cars, over 200 new cars, almost 100 used cars. So if you want a new Ford or a used car, come see us on Broad Street. Jamal Wills of the Los Angeles Lakers talks about what it would mean to be a father. I think that would give our responsibility to our kids. Once a child is here, it's your child. It's not going around us. I would just say to be very careful about what you do and who you do it with. Parenthood is not a game. Don't play around with it. The message from the U.S. Public Health Service. to the bottom half of the fifth inning. The microphone survived that. It'll survive anything. The Indians trail one to nothing. Dave McKay, Al Ashby, and then the second baseman, Tim Johnson, to face right-handed Dave Freyleven. Dave has pitched very effectively. He had one inning, in which he gave up a run on three hits. And he's only given up one other hit. First pitch to the left-hand hitting McKay is up high, ball one. McKay has switched back to batting left-handed. He bounced the single through the right side, and he was the man that scored the only run in this game back in the third inning. Pass ball high. Indians won the opener two to nothing behind Rick Waits. Last inning relief by hope by Jim Curran picked him up to save. Ball two, no strikes on the left-hand hitter. Wind up the pitch. Swing and a miss. Fastball down around the knees. Two one pitch. Foul back over the screen. Two and two. A 
that first game, home run by Gary Alexander in the second inning, provided the margin of difference. Indians pick up a run in the second inning, a run in the third, and Rick Waits made it stand up. Two balls, two strikes. Fries Levin throws. Inside and high. Good fastball by the right-hander. Three and two. Fries Levin is ready. Three, two pitch. High fly ball. Left field. Grub coming on. Blanks and Bell going out. Grubb says, I'll take it, and he does. Just inside fair territory. One up, one down, fifth inning. That and now will be Al Ashby. Ashby has fouled out to the catch. He tried to bunt McKay over. And on the sacrifice attempt, fouled the ball back of the plate. And Gary Alexander grabbed it. Allen has switched it about him left-handed. Al has hit two home runs, seven RBIs. Swing and a foul back, strike one. His batting average stands at 209. Let's see what he's done from the left side, 210, right side, 222. Curve inside and low. One ball, one strike. Outfield straight away for him. Kuiper back about 15 feet into the outfield. That ball is low again. Two balls and a strike. Wind up and the pitch. Swing and a miss on the changeup. Two and two. Nashby way out in front. He was just completely pulled. One man out, fifth inning. Blue Jays lead one nothing. Lined up. Ground ball sharply hit toward the second baseman, Kuiper. Picks it up, throws, and gets him. Two up, two down, fifth inning. And now Tim Johnson will wrap the base hit the center field his first time up. McKay running on the pitch, legged it around the third. And then he scored on Vicetti's hit the left. number 17, Tim Johnson. Timmy Johnson. Originally started in the Los Angeles Dodgers organization. Curve and it drops below the strike zone. Ball one. Yankees won the first game of their doubleheader, three to two. Came up with two runs to tie it late in the game, then won it. And uh, running the eighth inning. Gidry is now 13 and 0. Inside and high. Two balls, no strikes. Johnson, left-hand batter. Yankees lead their second game, three to one at the end of two and a half. Bouncy ball, right side. Thornton comes on, grabs, runs to the bag, gets there. One, two, three, they go in the fifth inning, nothing across. And Dave Friesleben has pitched very, very well. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. End of five innings in the second game. It's the Toronto Blue Jays one, the Cleveland Indians nothing. You know, listening to Major League Baseball on 3WJ is a great way to follow the national pastime. But to really appreciate the game and the players' talents, at least once in a while, you should see a game in person. And those of us at 3WJ would like you to see the exciting Cleveland Indians on us during our Tribe Ticket Giveaway. All you have to do is send us your name, address, and phone number. And every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during the noon news, we'll draw a name to win two tickets to an Indians home game of your choice. If your name is drawn, your ticket's put into the mail that same day. And we won't stick you out in the left field bleachers, but in box seats, and we'll be right next to the action. To enter, send your name, address, and phone number on a postcard or letter to Tribe Tickets. 3WJ, P.O. Box 373, Johnstown, Ohio, 43031. Again, that's Tribe Tickets. P.O. Box 373, Johnstown, Ohio, 43031. To win two box seat tickets to a Cleveland Indians baseball game of your choice. Entries are limited to one per week, so enter today and let 3WJ take you out to the ball game. We go now into the sixth inning. The Indians have some work to do. They trail one nothing. They will have the ninth man in the batting order, Lavelle Blank, in the top of the order. Jim Norris and Rick Manning to face Jesse Jefferson. Jefferson has been stingy in the hit department. Indians have had only two hits off him. 
a single by Kuiper in the third, and a double by Tarbo last inning, the fifth. Bob L. tried to sacrifice his first time up and was successful. So officially, he has not been to the plate. A fastball missed outside and all ball one. Wind up. Right hand at toes. Foul off to the right. Sailing deep into the seats well back of the Indian dugout. One ball and a strike. Jefferson delivers. Long drive, left center field. Pretty well hit, chasing back up. Shaw at the wall. It's gone, a home run. Rodell Blanks, it's his first home run of the year, and the Indians have tied this game in the sixth at one. Rodell Blanks getting number one, his 13th RBI, and we have a brand new game, one to one, sixth inning. Here's Jim Norris. He's 0 for 2 in the game. The right fielder, number 27. Wide the center, called down on strike. Jim Norris batting at 258. Jesse Jefferson winds it up. Fastball buzzed over, but out, but high. One ball, no strikes. Jefferson thought he might have had a strike. That home run off Jeff Jesse Jefferson, the 17th that he's allowed. His ball two outside and high. Jefferson leads the staff of the Blue Jays in surrounding home runs at 17th. 79th home run they've allowed. High pop foul out of play. Strike one. Make it 80 home runs because Indians had one in the first, Gary Alexander. One in the first game. Mike Vale is having a home run for the Cubs with two men on, you say? What's that make the score? Phillies lead the Cubs six to three. That game in the seventh inning now. Two balls and a strike. Line drive left field. Will the upshore going back at the warning pad? He reaches up and he grabs it. That's Jim Norris bidding for a base hit or extra base hit. That bid thwarted by the glove of Willie Upshaw. Well, the upshot does not look like a fellow when he goes after the ball that is entirely sure exactly which way he's going to run or where that ball is going, but he gets the job done. Here's Rick Manning. He's 0 for 2. I'm sure he made a diving, sliding catch last inning. Turned it into a double play. Change up. Bounce to the first base side. Foul. Over near Rocky Calavito in the coaching box. Rocky bends down, picks it up. Strike one. One to one the score of this game. The Indians with three hits and the Blue Jays with four. Sixth inning. Indians took the opening game 2 nothing. Line drive. Right field. Coming on is Hutton. He reaches out and grabs it. He is tapping the ball right on the nose in this inning. One home run and two line drives. Two minutes down and here's Johnny Grubb. Foul out to the catcher, ground out to the second baseman for John. Time call, Johnny not quite set in the batter's box and he has the time to get it. Curveball hit high in the air, shallow center field. Out goes the shortstop, Johnson. On comes Willie Upshaw, and on comes the city. Upshaw takes it. In the inning, one run for the Indians on Lavelle Blank's first home run of the year. One hit, no errors, none left. Middle of six, second game of the doubleheader. Blue Jays one, Indians one. Get into the swing of things at Broadview Golf Course at routes 310 and 16 in Pachascala. 10 minutes east of I-270 on Broad Street. Broadview is a beautiful nine-hole, 35-par course that's open to the public. You'll be pleased when you see the watered fairways and pleasant surroundings. No tee times are required, and club and electric cart rental is available. You'll find fine food and beverages in the clubhouse, and the pro shop carries anything the golfer wants or needs at special discount prices. Broadview Golf Course at Route 310 and 16 in Potascala, a challenging nine-hole golf course. Only the rich can afford to buy elsewhere. That's a little slogan that I've made up. This is Dave Smith of Dave Smith Ford. 
And that is right. Only the rich can afford to buy elsewhere because we will save you money on a new Ford car or truck. We have a very fine selection of used cars also at this time. We need more used cars, so if you do have a used car or especially a used truck you want to trade, bring it on over to us because we do need them. There's Smith Ford, halfway between Columbus and York. It's time for the sixth inning for the Blue Jays. We will see the top of the batting order, Rick Facetti, Willie Upshaw, and then third baseman Roy Howell. The Indians and the Blue Jays are tied at one. Rick Facetti has flied to right. He has singled. That came in the third inning and drove in the only Blue Jay run of the game. The only Blue Jay run of the day. Indians won the open at two to nothing. Am I right? Birds in town, or the other birds, I should think, of the Blue Jays. Also in the league now, the Baltimore Orioles fly into town. They take on the Indians. Tomorrow night, 7.35 at the stadium. Ball one outside. Prize Raymond throws. Foul ball down the right side out of play. One ball and a strike. We'll give you a rundown on the scoreboard here in a moment. Strike one, ball one. Dave Freislaven winds, he delivers. Curveball, slips it below the strike zone. American League, Yankees beat the Tigers in the first game, three to two. Yankees lead the second game, three to one. They've played two and a half. Indians can win this one, Tigers lose. Indians can move up a notch, right? Yes, they could. Could be tied, each of them. Tied with the Tigers, right. Next pitch is inside and low. Three balls and a strike. Prize Levin winds and he throws. High pop, third base side out of play. Full count three and two. Boston and Baltimore were postponed by rain. Kansas City playing at Oakland, bottom half of the seventh inning. Oakland leads one to nothing. That's the first of a doubleheader. Texas leading California two to nothing. They've gone into the bottom half of the third at Anaheim. Three two pitch. Bouncy ball passed him on. Here's second base. Is Blank picks it up, throws, and gets him at first. Good play. Good play by Lavelle. He had a tough chance because seeing Kaipo crossing behind second base, and it appeared the ball might have even hit second base as it went by. Lavelle Blank throws out Rick Bassetti on a bang bang play, 6 3 on the out of first. Here's Willie Upshaw, and in the bullpen, Sid Marge is throwing for the Indians. Dave Freislaven has not pitched that much. And so from here on out, I would think, Jeff Torborg will watch him very, very closely for signs of his tiring. The left fielder, number 26, Willie Upshaw. He has pitched really well, giving up one run on four hits, a run on three of hits in one inning. A curveball, two low, ball one. Willie looked like he might bunt at it, didn't offer. Milwaukee playing in Seattle. Milwaukee won, Seattle nothing. That's at the end of two. Wind up and the pitch. Down too low, 2-0. Oh. National League, the Phillies lead the Chicago Cubs six, at least six to three. Cubs are still batting high, foul drifting off to the left. We know that Bale hit a home run in the seventh inning with two on, but they never did send us what the Phillies had done in the seventh. So the Phillies have six, and we know that the Cubs have three. 2-1 pitch. Just a bit low over the outside corner. 3-1. First game, the Cardinals beat the Expos 5 to nothing. Down low, ball four. Well, the upshot draws the walk. That is the second walk, and here comes a walk by the manager. Jeff Torborg walking for the mound. The second walk off. Leave. He hadn't struck anybody out. He's given up just four hits. And Jeff walking very slowly. Manji throwing in the bullpen for the try. Left-hand batter. Howell is ready in the bullpen. They're waving to the bullpen. So Howell, the left-hand batter, will look at a left-handed Sid Manji who comes chugging in from the bullpen. And for Dave Freislaven, he has pitched very, very well here this afternoon. Five and a third inning. He has given up just one run on four hits. He walked two, struck nobody out. 
and Sid Mangi comes in. We'll be back to tell you about Sid after we have this timeout. Stand by engine room. Stand by engine room. I take in gangway, single up all lines. Take in gangway, single up all lines. Slow stern. Slow stern, Captain. Uh, take over, mate. Let's get on down with it. Huh? Aye, Captain. I'd like to try some of my mail pouch tobacco, Cap. Came aboard with a mail at Wheeling. Oh, don't mind if I do. The story of a great American tradition. Mail pouch chewing tobacco. Mail pouch was America's first brand of leaf tobacco. And it's been pleasing men ever since. That's because mail pouch has its own special one-of-a-kind flavor that comes from over 90 years' experience in giving tobacco chewers what they want. A clean, fresh taste that's not too strong. It isn't too sweet either. A flavor that really lasts and satisfies a man all day long. So if you haven't tried mail pouch lately, chew a few packs and taste the mail pouch difference. You'll see why it's become a tradition to chew mail pouch and treat yourself to the best. Left-hander Sid Mangi coming into the ball game. This is his 18th appearance of the year. That includes a couple of starts. He has won two, lost one with three saves. He took a pounding yesterday after a series of excellent relief appearances. And his earned run average is now 3.10. And he'll face Roy Howell. He's 0 for 2 in the game. Runner at first. One man down, six fitting. Game is tied at one. Mangi out of the set position. Upshaw leads it first, the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike one. Jeff Tallboy, after the game yesterday, told Sid that can't be perfect every day and shake what happened yesterday off and just go back to pitching the way nice and relaxed. Strike one. Swing and a miss, strike two. Good fastball at the letters. On deck is Rico Cardi. One to one to score this game. We are in inning number six. Indians took the open at two to nothing. Curveball line to left field. Coming over his grub. Can't get to it. It's a fair ball inside the line. Rolling down the corner. Around third. Coming around the scores up. So here's the goal. It'll not be in time. He's going to the base with another foul. A two strike curveball. And now laced it to left field. The opposite field just inside the line. Gets a double, and the Blue Jays get the go-ahead run. Two to one, Blue Jays lead it. That run is charged to Dave Friesleben, so statistically he is out of the game. Friesleben charged with two runs on four hits, walk two. Jeff Torboy is coming out to argue. I know what he's arguing about, even though I could not see the play because down that left field corner. The stands come out, and we can lose sight of it. But the bullpen benches are down there, and I have a feeling that when Grubb went into the corner, the ball was down and around that bench somewhere because I saw several of the relief pitch in the bullpen jump up and get out of the way. I think what Jeff is saying, that it should be a ground rule double, and that the runner should be sent back to third. Umpire thinking it was on the third base side is conferred with Jeff, and I think it's going to stand as just a double with the run scoring. The Blue Jays go on top, two to one. Here's Rico Cardi. One man out at second base, Roy Howell. Let's give Howell some credit. Two strikes on him and a curveball breaking down and away. He had been up a little bit high, but wasn't a bad curveball. And he ripped it to left field. They're going to put Cardi on. They're going to walk Cardi and face the left-hand batting John Mayberry. Here's Walk. Charge to Manji. And this one, of course, is the intentional variety. Mayberry comes to home plate. And in the bullpen, Indians have Dan Spiller up and throwing. John Mayberry. Runners at first and at second. Six innings. 
Blue Jays lead it two to one. Truman on, one man out. Gary Alexander stands up behind home plate, drops something out to his infield. Manji in the set position backs off. Dan Stillner throwing in the bullpen. Side on pitch is bounced to the first baseman. Over to the second one out. Shortstop throws back to first and a double play. Manji gets off the mound and takes the throw at first. Good play all the way around. Three, six, one on the double play. And in the inning, a run for the Blue Jays. Could have been a lot worse on one base hit. No errors. And one man left. At the end of six, the score. The Cleveland Indians won. The Toronto Blue Jays, two. A continuation at the beginning of side three, cassette number two. Alexander drills a single into right field. That's the fourth hit off Jefferson. And the Indians now with a runner at first base, nobody out, and Andre Thornton, the batter. And in the bullpen, Tom Murphy and Bob Willis are warming up. Jesse Jefferson looks in, gets the sign. Here's the stretch. And the pitch, Thornton squares to bunt and takes low and outside, ball one. It is two to one, Toronto in the top of the seventh inning. Bernie Cabo on deck. Jefferson, the stretch. And the throw to first, and Alexander plants that foot back in the bag.
the pitch. Thornton bunts it. First baseline picked up by Jefferson. Flips to the second baseman McKay. The sacrifice shoves Alexander to second base with one out. One to four on the put out on the sacrifice. Pitcher to the second baseman covering. And it will now bring to bat Bernie Carbo. Carbo has walked and doubled in this game. He had a double in the first game as well. The designated hitter, number seven, Bernie Carbo. Left hand batter against the right hander, Jesse Jefferson. Look in for the sign, the stretch by Jefferson, and the pitch to Bernie is a fastball, low and outside, ball one. Indians won the first game, two to nothing. Toronto leads the nightcap, seventh inning, by a score of two to one. Pitch, Bernie takes the curveball outside, ball two. Thompson is homered for Texas, and they are rolling at California now in the fourth inning. Three to nothing. Stretch by Jefferson. The pitch, fastball high, three and oh. Jesse Jefferson started out like he was going to really do a number today, but for the last couple of India innings, the Indians have been banging on him a little bit. Pitch to Bernie, a strike at the knees with a fastball, three and one to count. Alexander at second base and one out. Murphy and Willis heating in the bullpen for the Blue Jays. Buddy Bell on deck. Jefferson takes the long look and Bernie Carbo steps back, time called. Mayberry at first, McKay at second, Johnson at short, Howell at third, and outfield of Upshaw, Bossetti, and Hutton left to right, Ashby catching, and Jefferson with a 3-1 to Carbo, fouled out of play to the left, full count of 3-2. and two. Jonasi coaching a third, Rocky on the first base side. Freisleben went the first five and a third, and certainly pitched very creditably this Thank afternoon. You, Gave up two runs, earned four hits. Alexander leading at second base. The stretch of the 3-2 pitch to Carbo, and Bernie takes high ball four. Carbo walks for the second time. That is the second walk by Jefferson. He spanned three. Buddy Bell has bounced to third, lined to center field, and Bassetti robbed him on a sliding catch in center field. And then Willie Upshaw played, can you top this? And made a great catch in left and turned it into a double play to end a potential inning in the fifth. Stretch by Jefferson, pitch to Buddy. Bell wraps it up the middle, twisting grounder at the bag. Step on second, through the first double play. Johnson stepped on the bag at second as he got the ball and threw out Bell. And it's no runs, a hit a walk and a man left. The end of six and one half innings. Toronto two, Cleveland one. You know, listening to Major League Baseball on 3WJ is a great way to follow the national pastime. But to really appreciate the game and the players' talents, at least once in a while, you should see a game in person. And those of us at 3WJ would like you to see the exciting Cleveland Indians on us during our Tribe Ticket Giveaway. All you have to do is send us your name, address, and phone number. And every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during the noon news, we'll draw a name to win two tickets to an Indians home game of your choice. If your name is drawn, your tickets flew into the mail that same day. And we won't stick you out in the left field bleachers, but in box seats, so you'll be right next to the action. To enter, send your name, address, and phone number on a postcard or letter to Tribe Tickets. 3WJ, P.O. Box 373, Johnstown, Ohio, 43031. Again, that's Tribe Tickets, P.O. Box 373, Johnstown, Ohio, 43031. To win two box seat tickets to a Cleveland Indians baseball game of your choice. Entries are limited to one per week, so enter today and let 3WJ take you out to the ball game. Coming on in the home half of the seventh inning, he replaced Freisleben in the sixth. And Bob Baylor is going to bat for Tommy Hutton in the seventh inning with the left-hand relief pitcher aboard. Roy Hart.
Marchfield elects to go to the right-hand hitter. Well, Baylor will be batting. Hutton popped to third and walked in two trips. First pitch is fouled right back to the screen. Strike one. Baylor is hitting 255. He has one home run for the year. And Bob has driven in 26 runs. Lined up in the pitch, moves up to bust the ball, and it was high, wall one, strike one. Baylor in the first game went one for four. He is five for 13 in the series. Kick of the pitch, curveball, beauty. Steve right to one ball, two strikes. Baylor has scored two runs in this weekend series with the Blue Jays. Wind up by Manji and the pitch to Baylor, low and inside, off the glove of Alexander. The count is even at two balls, two strikes. Following Baylor, we'll see McKay and Ashby. Now oh, an examination of the baseball by Dave Phillips. He flips it out of play and gives another one to Sid Manji. Kicking the pitch, Baylor hits a high fly ball foul, first base side, Thornton back toward the tarp and makes the catch in foul ground. Baylor fouls out to the first baseman, one away in the seventh inning. McKay will come to bat and swing around to the right side against the left-hander Manji after batting from the left side against Dave Freisleben. Toronto leads 2-1. to one. Indians run coming in the sixth inning on Larvell Blank's first home run of the year. Lined up in the pitch. High ball one. Blue Jays two runs, five hits. And the Indians one run on four base hits. Foul ball back over the screen and the count evens at one and one. Thornton at first, Kuiper at second, Blanks at short, Bell at third, pitch to McKay, fly ball, left center field, Johnny Grubb coming on, dive, can't get it, ball under the glove, picked up by Manning, and McKay at second base for the double. John appeared to have a lot of trouble picking that ball up out of the crowd. Yes, he did. And then he made a last-second lunge for the ball and couldn't quite get there. It's a base hit, a double. That is the second hit off Manji. Both of them have been doubled. McKay is now two for three in this game. Al Ashby is fouled to the catcher trying to bunt and bounce to the second baseman. Al swings around to the right side against the left-hander Manji. Two to one, Toronto in the seventh. The pitch. Fastball inside, ball one. Manji taking the long look to Alexander for the side. The throw and the ball's wrapped down the third baseline foul by Buddy Bell into the bullpen and the count is even at one and one. McKay at second base and one out. Here's the stretch. Manji's 1-1 pitch to Ashby, low and inside, and that caught the umpire. Two balls and a strike. Ball bounced up and nailed him. Dan Spillner in the bullpen. A pitch. Hit hard. Foul down the third baseline, and the bounce again by Buddy Bell. Two balls, two strikes. Otto Velez has come out of the dugout. Tim Johnson has gone back in, so Velez will be batting for Timmy Johnson. Seventh inning. There's the paid attendance being announced. Pretty good crowd. Pitch. Low. 28,305 the paid attendance. McKay leads at second, 3-2 count on Ashby. 
stretch by Manji. Looks back, throws out there, and Kuiper grabs the throw, jumping in front of the bag, and the count is still three and two. Yankees still leading Detroit three to two at the end of five innings of play. There's a swing and a shot foul into the third base dugout. Manji the stretch again. Checks the runner. 3-2 pitch. Ashby takes high. Ball four. Second walk given up by Sid. This one on the intentional. The first one was on purpose. Alexander out to talk to Manji in front of the mound. And here's Otto Velez. Here's Jeff Tobor. Velez with Pacetti chatting in the on-deck circle. Jeff Torborg just now coming across the foul line, and he waves to the bullpen. So Sid Manji will be out of here in the seventh inning of play, having pitched one inning. Given up two hits thus far, two walks. Did not strike out anybody, and Dan Spilner will be on, and we'll tell you more about Dan after we take this time out. We're everywhere. I've got one in my office, I've got two in the garage at home, and yesterday I even found one in the men's restroom. This is Dave Smith, and I'm talking about the selection of new Fords at Dave Smith Ford, 10 minutes east of Columbus on Broad Street. We have a fine selection, and I'll save you money on a new Ford or buy you two steak dinners for your trouble. Come out where we offer on-the-spot financing, and it's fun to buy a car. That's Dave Smith Ford on Broad Street, halfway between Columbus and Newark. 3WJ presents the Columbus Jackpot Program. Over $500 in gift certificates for you. A number of people are being called by telephone to receive this fantastic offer. You may be called today. $500 in gift certificates for only $24.95. If you can't wait for that call, phone 868-8595. That's 868-8595. The Columbus Jackpot. Handed coming on, Spiller, former member of the San Diego Padres, will be facing Otto Velez here in inning number seven. Runners at first and at second, one man down, and Indians trail two to one. Spiller making his ninth appearance. He's won a game he's not lost. He's also had a save, and his earned run average 1.74. Ten in the third inning, walked four, struck out nine, and is allowed six hits. Velez will bat for Johnson. And now Alexander's going to go out to the mound and check signals with Dan Spilner. Well, it's pinch hitting here in the seventh inning of play. Otto was in the first game of today's doubleheader and went one for two. He walked a couple of times. He is four for seven in the series with two runs batted in. Spillner working from the stretch. Velez hitting at 289. Stretch and pitch. Velez takes high ball one. Otto with three homers and 19 runs batted in. McKay at second and Ashby at first. One out of the seventh inning. Two to one, Toronto leads. Stretch of the pitch by Spilner. Velez, it's a high drive to left field. Johnny Grubb going back at the wall. Reached up, couldn't get it. Ball bang dropped the wall over Manning's head. One run scores. Ashby to third, they hold him there, and it's a three to one ball game on a double to the wall that left by Velez. Otto Velez did not miss the home run by very much. Velez getting his 20th run batted in. As McKay scores from second. Three to one ball game. The run is charged to Sid Manji. Rick Bozzetti. 
Rick Bosetti, the batter. Ashby at third, Velez at second, and Alexander will go to the mound again to talk to Dan Spilner. And the bullpen. Hood is up in the bullpen for the Indians. Hood started yesterday's ball game. Call to the bullpen, from the bullpen, that uh, Hood is ready. Bosetti has won for three this afternoon. His single in the third inning drove in a run. The time gave Toronto a one to nothing lead against Friesleben. The pitch, wrapped to the mound. Filner lost it, recovers, and then throws out Bosetti in the runner's hole. Two outs. Filner threw the glove up in the air and hit the glove and went straight up out of the glove over his head. Good control of you. Took it easy, waited for the ball to come down, checked the runner at third, then nailed him at first. Upshaw. Upshaw, left hand batter. Two out and two on. Stretch of the pitch and Upshaw takes a strike of the inside corner. Strike one. Dorado has climbed on top three to one. Stretch by Spilner. Checks the runner at third. Upshaw checks his swing on a high hard one and the count is even at one and one. Indians won the opener two to nothing on the combined pitching efforts of Rick Waits and Jim Kern. Stretch by Spilner, the pitch. Upshaw fouls it back over the screen into the seats and the count is one and two. Roy Howell on deck. Howell doubled homer run on the sixth inning. Stretch by the right-hander Spilner. One-two pitch. Upshaw wraps it to the mound. Knocked down by Spilner. Rolls short first. He picks it up. Scoops it over to Thornton. And the side is retired. Seventh inning. One more run. Two more hits and a walk, and two men left on for Toronto. At the end of seven innings of play, the score at Toronto. Blue Jays three, Indians one. against Jesse Jefferson. We have a final score now from Cincinnati. Dodgers got one run in the ninth, but it wasn't enough. And Cincinnati, with that four-run rally in the seventh Marquez inning, beat them 7-6. to six. George Foster's home run with two men on proved to be the big blow in that ball game. Winning pitcher was uh, Duck Bear, and Rao took the loss. They sat in the rain for just about an hour in that game. But nobody got lonely. They had 46,067 there today. And here's Dwayne Kuyper. Dwayne in this game is single to left and line to left. Upshaw made a super catch, diving, 
and then doubled up Carbo off second base after the grab. Lined up on the pitch. Kuiper takes the fastball, strike one. Tomorrow night, the Indians will be home to take on the Baltimore Orioles. Pitch to Dwayne, strike two at the knees. Pretty good curveball by Jefferson. His curveball has gotten better all of a sudden. Jefferson looking in to get the sign. Winds and throws. Low. One ball, two strikes. Taylor stays in the ball game and is playing in right field. And Louis Gomez has come on to play shortstop. He's number nine in the order. Curveball high. Two balls, two strikes to Kuiper. Larbell blanks on deck. Tom Murphy and Bob Willis again in the bullpen for the Blue Jays in the eighth. Wind up with a pitch. Kuiper wraps the bouncing ball back to Gomez. The shortstop throws the first one out of the eighth. Dennis brings up Larvel Blanks. Larvel has sacrificed and homered his first home run of the year. It came in the sixth inning of play and at the time tied the ball game. It did not stay tied very long, however. First pitch to Larvel, a ball, ball one. Jesse Jefferson wheels and deals again, and Blanks drills a foul back on the screen. One ball, one strike. Jefferson ready again, delivers. Blanks takes high, ball two. Wind up the pitch. High and inside, and the count is three and one. We're getting a station break to you here just as soon as we can. Pirates and the Mets were rained out today. Here's the three-one pitch. Larvell pops a foul over the first base dugout. This one will be out of play. Three balls, two strikes. One game in each league has been washed out. Jefferson to the rising sack. Gives it a little squeeze. Drops it down. Larvell waiting with a 3-2 count. Pitch to Larvell. Low ball four. Blanks walks with one out of the eighth. Third walk given up by Jefferson to go with three strikeouts. And we'll pause for station identification. This is the Cleveland Indians Baseball Network. This is 3WJ, Central Ohio's home of the Cleveland Cavaliers, Browns, and Indians. WWWJ, Johnstown. Jim Norris at bat. Pitch to Jimmy, bounced up the middle. Gomez steps on second, throws to first, another double play. Three of them in this game. And the last two have been of that variety where a bouncing ball has gone right at the bag in second. The shortstop has picked it off and turned it into a quick twin killing. Top of the eighth, no runs, no hits, a walk, and nobody left. The end of seven and one half innings. Toronto three, Cleveland one. Here's some great news for people who like to know they've made a smart buy. At Spencer Dodge in Columbus, we get the stylish 1978 Dodge Diplomat for just $47.95. That's right, a luxurious Diplomat, not six or seven thousand dollars, just $47.95. Diplomatically speaking, that's a smart buy. This time, instead of Chevy or Ford, pick out a mind changer. The new Baber Diplomat for just $47.95. See you soon at Spencer Dodge, a Columbus tradition at 5100. East Main Street. It's definitely different. It's differently exciting. It's the kind of club you wish you'd known about sooner. Marco Polo, the super disco for people over 21. With a finest selection of current music, 
and a sound system unconditionally guaranteed to shake your senses and your soul. Every Wednesday night is Ladies Night, and happy hour lasts all day. Marco Polo, 1605 West 5th Avenue in Columbus, across from North Star. in the last half of the eighth inning will attempt to keep the Blue Jays off the scoreboard. They'll have one more shot at Jefferson in the ninth inning of play. Roy Howell, third baseman, bounced to the first baseman in the first inning, slide to left field in the third. His double off Manji drove in the Toronto's second run in the sixth inning of play and gave them a two-to-one lead. They now lead three-to-one. And we're in the home half of the eighth inning. Dan Spillner in relief. Here's the pitch. Fastball low and inside. Ball one. Howell is two for 12 in the series. The moment, hitting 291. Lined up in Spillner's pitch. Curve ball low. Ball two. Two and oh. Thornton at first. Kuiper at second. Blanks at short. Bell at third. Grubb in left. Manning in center. Norris in right. Alexander catching. Spillner pitching. Fastball outside. Three and oh. Reisleben started, went five and a third, gave up four hits and two runs. Manji pitched an inning, was touched for a run. There's a strike of the knees from Spillner to Howell. Three and one the count. Jefferson's gone all the way for the Blue Jays. Well, three one pitch. Swing and a miss. For the fastball by him, and the count is three and two. The Yankees three to two over the Tigers, with the Yankees batting in the seventh inning of their second game. Three two pitch. And inside, ball four, Howell walks. That is the first walk by Spillner and a total of five by Indian pitching. They have not struck out anyone in the second game. Rico Cardi bounced to second, bounced to short, and was intentionally walked and then doubled up in the sixth inning. Cardi hitting 287. Rico in the series, two for 11 with four runs batted in. John Mayberry on deck. The stretch by Spillner, the pitch to Rico. He takes the fastball, strike one. The Indians scheduled to arrive at Cleveland Hopkins at 9.50 tonight. Pitch to Rico, swing and a miss. Strike two. I'll be coming back by a charter and the charter flight will not be able to leave Toronto until nine o'clock tonight. 9.50 should put them uh, on the ground at Hopkins. The stretch by Spillner, 0-2 pitch to Rico, swing and a miss, struck him out. Oh, Cardi fans, that is the first strikeout by Indian pitching in the game, and there's one out and one on in the eight. John Mayberry has fly to center, singled up the middle, and banged into a 3-6-1 double play to end the sixth inning of play. Blue Jays, three runs on seven hits. The Indians, one run on four. Kansas City just hit Oakland with four runs in the eighth inning to take a 4-1 lead. But Page has come back with a home run for the A's, so it's 4-2, and the A's are still batting. Pitch is low to big John Mayberry. Ball on a curve. Mayberry pinch hit on the ninth inning of the first game. Fly to left fielder John Grubb to end it. Give Kern a save and waits his sixth win. Stretch of the pitch. Mayberry lays off another breaking ball. This one is low and the count is 2-0. Dan Spillner. Howell at first base. One out. 2-0 pitch to Mayberry. Stray. Companies. Fastball. 2-1. John so not exactly sure of that call. He's looking at umpire Phillips, and he does not like it. 2-1 the count. The stretch. The pitch. Mayberry takes strike two. Now he is really unhappy. Two balls, two strikes. He thought the previous pitch was low. He thought that one was obviously high. 
as he conducts a little conversation with Dave Phillips. See her when you're there, huh? Come on now. And the count is even at 2-2. The stretch, the pitch. Mayberry chops a foul over toward the first base dugout. The ball girl picks that one off, and the count is still two balls, two strikes. Last to the eighth, Toronto leads three to one. Indians won the first game two to nothing. A stretch, two two pitch, bouncing ball, first base side. Thornton gets it on the short hop. Going to run over, step on first to get Mayberry down to second base. Goes Howell with two outs. Bob Baylor will be the batter. Baylor fouled out to the first baseman in the seventh inning, and now Jeff Torborg is jogging out to the mound to talk with Spillner and Gary Alexander. The conversation is brief, and Jeff turns around and trots back into the dugout. Last half of the eighth inning, Toronto leading three to one. The right fielder, number one, Bob Baylor. Bob Baylor, that open right hand stand. Bob is five for 14 in the series. Stretch of the pitch, Baylor takes a strike and the knees, strike one. Third base coach, Harry Warner, calling for the runner at second Howell to take a larger lead. Pitch, fastball, low and outside. One ball, one strike. Now Kuiper, the second baseman for the Indians, starts to walk over toward the bag and cut down that margin between himself and the bag. And Howell appropriately cuts down his lead. One, one pitch. Foul ball out of play to the right back into the seat. One ball, two strikes. Two outs here in the last of the eighth inning. The stretch. The look back and the one-two pitch to Baylor. He lays off the curveball. The count is even at two balls, two strikes. The stretch. Spillner looks back to Howell, pitch to Baylor, jammed him with a fastball. Baylor started to stride into the pitch and had to bail out quickly. High and tight offering, full count of three and two. Spillner set again. Here's the 3-2 pitch to Bob Baylor. Bounces into home plate, bounces away from Alexander. Howell goes to third and Baylor is walked. Wild pitch. Gary Alexander had to run down that wild pitch all the way over to the Toronto on deck circle. So we have another walk for the Indian staff in this second game. A total of six, two of them by Spillner, and he has runners at first and third to contend with with two outs. And Dave McKay, the batter. McKay is back to swing and lefty against a right hander, Spillner. Kay having a good second game. He's two for three. First two hits of the series. Batting average, 257. Stretch of the pitch. Takes a fastball inside. Almost clipped him. Ball one. Home half of the eighth inning. Three to one, Toronto leads. Indians won the first game. Two to nothing. Pitch out. Nobody going. The count is 2-0. and oh. The stretch. The pitch. Fastball low again. Ball three. Three and oh. A bad one would load him up for Al Ashby. Bullpen is quiet, so it is Spillner's task to get out of this. 3-0 pitch. McKay takes a strike of the knees. Three and one. Ball pops out of the glove of Alexander, about four feet to the right of home plate. He grabs it, and now he wants another glove. They have torn out the webbing in that one. So Alexander heads for the dugout to 
secure another catcher's mitt. And Spillner kicks at the dirt out on the mound. Last report, Phillies led the Cubs 6-3 in the 8th. Haven't heard anything about that for a while. Cardinals beat the Expos in the first game 5-4. Montreal leads 2-1 in the third inning of the nightcap. Mets and the Pirates rained out. Giants 9-7, or make that Atlanta 9-7 over the Giants. The Reds 7-6 over the Dodgers. Houston trailing San Diego 3-2 in the 8th, although Turner is now homered, so that'll make it at least 4-2 in the 8th inning. Yankees beat the Tigers in the American League 3-2 in the first game. Guidry's now 13-0. And it's Yankees 3-2 over the Tigers in the second game in the seventh. Minnesota lost to the White Sox 8-5 in the first game, but they lead the White Sox 6-2 in the nightcap. Boston and Baltimore rained out, and there are three more going out on the West Coast. We'll catch up with them when time permits. Stretch, and the 3-1 pitch runner going. The ball is hit way up in the air in right field. Jimmy Norris cruising over into right center, getting onto the ball, makes the catch of the side, is retired. Eighth inning of play, no runs, no hits, two walks, and two left. And we're going to the ninth. The Indians with their final shot at the Blue Jays in this series. The score, the Toronto Blue Jays three and the Cleveland Indians one. Hey, about time you got here. Can't lay another foot of track till we unload your flat cars. Help yourself. And there's a mail pouch for you back in the caboose. Oh, that'll have my tobacco in it. Hank, tell the men I got some real fine leaf tobacco for chewing. Came in the mail pouch. The men who want to share line up at the caboose. Hey, you others, get these barrels of spikes off the platform. The story of a great American tradition, Mail Pouch Chewing Tobacco. Mail Pouch was America's first brand of leaf tobacco, and it's been pleasing men ever since. That's because Mail Pouch has its own special one-of-a-kind flavor that comes from over 90 years' experience in giving tobacco chewers what they want. A clean, fresh taste that's not too strong, but isn't too sweet either. A flavor that really lasts and satisfies a man all day long. So if you haven't tried mail pouch lately, chew a few packs and taste the mail pouch difference. You'll see why it's become a tradition to chew mail pouch and treat yourself to the best. Ninth inning and Jesse Jefferson will look at Manning, Grubb, and Alexander in the bullpen. The left-hander is Bob Willis and the right-hander is Tom Murphy. Toronto leading 3-1. to one. Those three West Coast games, Kansas City 4, Oakland 2, the A's are batting in the 8th. California just scored three times in the 5th inning to tie their game with Texas at 3-3. And Milwaukee 1-0 over Seattle in the 4th inning. And we'll update all of those games for you on the 10th inning show. And on the 10th inning show today, Herb will be chatting with a former teammate and fellow broadcaster, early win of the Toronto Blue Jays broadcast team. Alan Ashby's thrown out to second base, and here's Rick Manning. Manning has bounced to second, popped to third, and lined to the right fielder. The ninth inning, the Indians with one more shot at the Blue Jays. Dave Phillips going out toward the mound to look the baseball over and makes a little change with Jesse Jefferson. Powell comes inside the bag at third, looking for the bunt. Manning is 3 for 15 in this series. And this is his last shot to extend an eight-game hitting streak. Wind up with a pitch to Rick. He takes a strike. Knee high on the inside corner. Strike one. Next pitch, Manning wraps the bouncer back to McKay. Second baseman has it, throws to first. Manning is out, and there's one down on the ninth inning. Jesse Jefferson has pitched a very strong ball game here this afternoon. Johnny Grubb is 0 for 3 today in the second game, and 0 for 8 in the series. And Johnny Grubb at bat on the ninth. First pitch to John is a fastball, low and inside, ball one. Wind up on the next pitch. Fastball again low, ball two. Look in for the sign, the pitch. John takes a strike, fastball knee high inside corner. 
ninth inning, three to one Toronto. The pitch, Grubb wraps it again, right back to McKay. This time the second baseman guns to first successfully again, and the count is two out, nobody on for the Indians in the ninth, and Gary Alexander gets the last shot at Jefferson. Gary hit the home run that turned out to be the game winner in the opener, his 16th of the year. That was the fourth trip. And in this nightcap, he struck out twice and bounced to the first baseman. The pitch, Alexander takes a fastball high, ball one. Okay, Lord Perry goes the route again and wins his ninth. How about that? Six to two at Houston for the Padres. Pitch to Alexander, that's the beauty. Fastball strike and the count is even at one and one. Lined up by the right-hander, the 1-1 one -one pitch, but time had been called as Alexander steps back. And the home plate umpire indicates timeout. Wind up in the pitch, Alexander swings and misses. One ball, two strikes. One more of those and it is all over. Jefferson looks in and gets the sign. Winds up and delivers. High and inside, leaning Alexander away. It's two balls, two strikes. comes the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And the game is over. Three up, three down in the ninth. The Blue Jays win the second game. Three to one and we'll start our wrap up after this timeout. You know, listening to Major League Baseball on 3WJ is a great way to follow the national pastime. But to really appreciate the game and the players' talents, at least once in a while, you should see a game in person. And those of us at 3WJ would like you to see the exciting Cleveland Indians on us during our Tribe Ticket Giveaway. All you have to do is send us your name, address, and phone number. And every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during the noon news, we'll draw a name to win two tickets to an Indians home game of your choice. If your name is drawn, your tickets put into the mail that same day. And we won't stick you out in the left field bleachers, but in box seats, so you'll be right next to the action. To enter, send your name, address, and phone number on a postcard or letter to Tribe Tickets. 3WJ, P.O. Box 373, Johnstown, Ohio, 43031. Again, that's Tribe Tickets, P.O. Box 373, Johnstown, Ohio, 43031. To win two box seat tickets to a Cleveland Indians baseball game of your choice. Entries are limited to one per week, so enter today and let 3WJ take you out to the ball game. Jesse Jefferson is our third six and seven. The visiting pitcher. Well, 101 pitches was all Jesse Jefferson needed today. He goes the route for the sixth time. He's now six and seven. And in the nine innings that he worked, he gave up the four hits, the one earned run, the home run by Blanks. He walked three, and he fanned four, including Gary Alexander, three times. I say his record is now six and seven. He's one and one this year against the Indians, and lifetime two and five against the Tribe. The starter and loser, Dave Freisleben, who is now zipping two, but Freisleben fits certainly much more creditably today than in his first experience for the Indians, and it has to give you hope that uh, Dave is getting his act together. He gave up four hits, two runs, although he wasn't around when the second one scored. Manji uh, delivered a double that drove in that second run charge to Freisleben and made Dave the loser. Manji and Spilner both worked in relief. Blue Jays, three runs, seven hits, no errors. And the Blue Jays stranded seven men. While for the Indians, it was one run, four hits, no errors, and the Indians stranded only three. The first Toronto run came in the third inning when McKay singled, Johnson singled, and Bassetti singled home McKay to make it one to nothing. The Indians tied it on Blank's first home run of the year into the seats and left of the sixth inning. And the Blue Jays promptly untied it with one out. Upshaw walked, and that was all for Freisleben. Armanji came on, and Howell drilled a double down the left field line, scoring the go-ahead run, making it 2-1. to one. Blue Jays added another run in the seventh inning of play on a double by McKay, 
a walk to Ashby, and a pinch hit double by Otto Velez off the wall and left, making it 3-1. to one. Indians were stymied in the second game by hitting into three double plays. So the Indians with a split on the day and a split on the series. Drive now at 36 and 41 for the year. They're Ashby at a pinch hit double by Otto Velez off the wall and left, making it 3-1. to one. Indians were stymied in the second game by hitting into three double plays. So the Indians with a split on the day and a split on the series. Drive now at 36 and 41 for the year. They're also 7 and 3 against the Toronto Blue Jays. And Toronto finishes up at 28 and 49 for the day. Indians are 17 games. Let's see. No, 16 and a half behind the Boston Red Sox. And could finish up just a game behind Detroit if the Tigers should lose that second game in New York. And we'll tell you probably the final on that one when uh, we come back for our 10th inning show. We'll have more for you here right after this timeout. here in the ballpark as the Cleveland Indians will now head for home to take on the Baltimore Orioles. A couple of big nights coming up at the stadium. Tomorrow night will be family night at 7.35. Baltimore in town. And of course, the head of the household pays the full cab for box reserved or general admission seats. And the rest of the gang gets in for half fare. The autograph booth will feature Ted Cox and Mike Paxton from 6.15 to 6.45. And then on Tuesday night, the 4th of July, a 7.35 game with the Orioles, it is going to be fireworks galore after the game, a big fireworks display. The Indians say it'll be the biggest display in town and their biggest, and if it is bigger than what they have shown us in the past in fireworks, it promises to be quite a display. Tomorrow night, schedule Dennis Martinez for Baltimore and Mike Paxton for the Indians. However, with the rain out of Boston and Baltimore today, the pitching plans of Baltimore may be changed. Uh, the schedule that we have, though, says Martinez against Paxton tomorrow night, and on Tuesday night, Mike Flanagan against David Clyde. Then the Indians head for Detroit to play two games, and will come home next weekend prior to the All-Star break for a big four-game series with the rugged Boston Red Sox. A Friday night game, a twilight doubleheader on Saturday night, and then a bat day Sunday single game with Boston, Jim Rice, and Yastrzemski and all that crowd coming to Cleveland for the uh, weekend prior to the All-Star break. Indians will then resume action on the West Coast following the All-Star break. Well, we invite you now to stay tuned for the 10th inning show. I'm going to have all the scores of all the games. It's been a busy Sunday in baseball in spite of the efforts of the weatherman on several fronts. And Herb Score will be chatting with his old compadre, Early Wynn. Announcers for this broadcast, selected and paid by 3WE Radio. First game, Waits and Kern combined on a three-hitter, and Alexander slugged his 16th. It was Cleveland to Toronto nothing. In the nightcap behind Jesse Jefferson, the final score, Toronto 3, Cleveland 1. Your 
the sports station in Central Ohio brings you Cleveland Indians baseball. Joe Tate and Herb Score. Cleveland's baseball is brought to you by Marco Polo Lounge on West Fifth Avenue in Columbus. The best is going town. By Dave Smith Ford, 10 minutes east of Columbus on Broad Street. By Ben Weiser, the King of Food. The mail pouch, chewing tobacco, treat yourself for the best. The mail pouch. By the Grand Blue Golf Course, a good great having a 16 and a task of a challenging nine hole golf course. And by Spitzer Dodge, 5100 East Main in Columbus. BWJ, Total Sports in Central Ohio, and Cleveland Indians Baseball. Blossomed out. 
Now, Lemansic, he looked fantastic in spring training, and when the season started, he couldn't do anything. He just won his second ball game the other day after losing nine. So you you can't believe the, the difference in the two guys. Uh, uh, did a real turnaround. Last year, Lemansic was the uh, was the backbone of the pitching staff, and uh, of course, uh, Garvin he. Uh, he looks good if he's got control. He's not uh, a blazing fastball pitcher. But when he's got control, he is very tough. And, uh, what about uh, young man Clancy? Clancy, he has to have a little bit of control, too, because when he throws the ball hard, he's dangerous. And his ball moves. And uh, lately, he has just, uh, this uh, first part of this year, he started working on a change of pace and his curveball. And his curveball has come around and a change of pace. And when he's got control of his fastball, he is really tough because... Uh, he throws, uh, I guess, harder than anybody on the ball club. He throws harder than Underwood. Tell me, what about pitching? You know, you were a kind of fellow. You, you worked hard at pitching. You had a good fastball, but you had all the other pitches to go along with. And I can recall talking with you uh, when I was a young pitcher, and you used to say, well, don't try to have too many pitches too fast. Master one or two before you go to another one. You think young pitchers today try to throw too many different pitches? Yes, I, I do, Herb. But I don't know whether I'm right or wrong. Um, uh, you see them, they're working on a fork ball, maybe a knuckle ball. A fork ball and a screw ball is the two things that everybody wants now. And uh, I was always afraid of those two pitches. I'd rather have the knuckle ball and the curve ball and the slider because the slider and the curve is a natural way your arm's going to go over across your body. When you throw a screw ball and a fork ball, I don't know about. Uh, I know they kind of throw it like a knuckle ball. Some people did, but I threw mine like a, just like I did the fastball, except I held it different. And uh, they turn the arm the opposite way. They turn the palm of the hand away from the body, and that is unnatural. And it seems to me like uh, it will, sooner or later, they'll have bone chips, is what I was always afraid of. I was always afraid of the sinker, even, much less a screwball. Uh, we have, uh, Willis here has a great screwball, and he is rougher on right-handers than he is on left-handers, I think, uh, because it is a different type of thing, a uh, screwball coming in, and one that really breaks. I don't know, uh, Herb, it's hard to tell anymore. You know, I didn't believe in putting ice uh, on the elbow. That was one of the things that scared me. When I first came back um, in 63, uh, this thing had just come about. Uh, Koufax started, I guess, and uh, or his trainer did, uh, the L.A. trainer. And uh, the uh, trainer says, uh, you want some ice on your arm? I says, no, I'll take some in the cup or in the glass. <laughs> the, cl the closest any ice will ever get to my elbow is in my hand in a cup or something. <laughs> well, that is one of the differences. They do treat the arm differently. Early one, of course, you pitched, uh, what, two or three different decades? Yeah, uh, well, four. Uh, I was stubborn. I wouldn't give up. <laughs> of course, I got started uh, just at the right time. I um, came to um, Washington in 1939, so I only got in one, uh, one year there. And uh, then I played through 1963. So uh, there was uh, Mickey Vernon, another uh, friend of yours, you know very well, and uh, Ted Williams. And then Minnie Minoso got, uh, they put Minnie Minoso in a pitch hit. Yeah, you know, so they're, uh, they're building them up now, you know. But um, And I heard one time that um, there was a couple of other fellows, that, uh, someone named Bobo Newsom. But uh, I really don't know. Uh, the sports writers have uh, not dug that up yet. Early one, I guess, really, we could go on and on and on with you, but we've run out of time. Early, we thank you for being with us, for being with us. We have a gift certificate for you from the folks at Don's Restaurants in Cleveland. Next time in Cleveland, three fine restaurants to take your choice. A couple of dinners from Don's Restaurants. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Early. Early one, I guess. Stay tuned. Joe will check the scoreboard after we have this time out. This is Bill Smith of the Board on Broad Street. We're halfway between Columbus and Newark. We sell new boards. We will save you money. In fact, we have a little... Statement we make, if you can't save your money on a milk board, I'll buy you two steak dinners. And we don't buy very many steak dinners. So come on over and see us. We've got a fine selection right now. New and used cars, over 200 new cars, almost 100 used cars. So if you're in a milk board or a used car, come see us on Broad Street. Get into the swing of things at Broadview Golf Course at routes 310 and 16 in Patascala, 10 minutes east of I-270 on Broad Street. Broadview is a beautiful nine-hole, 35-car course that's open to the public. You'll be pleased when you see the watered fairways and pleasant surroundings. No tea times are required, and club and electric cart rental is available. You'll find fine food and beverages in the clubhouse, and the pro shop carries anything the golfer wants or needs at special discount prices. Broadview Golf Course, at Route 310 and 16 in Patascala, a challenging nine-hole golf course. 
National League, the Philadelphia Phillies hung another loss on the Chicago Cubs, taking four out of five games in that series. The Cubs came up with a couple of runs in the last of the ninth, but fell one run short, six to five. Six runs, 13 hits, no errors for the Phillies. Five runs, 12 hits, no errors for the Cubs. Dick Ruth from the starter and winner, he's five and seven. With Brewster in the seventh, Tug McGraw came out on the ninth inning and picked up his sixth save. Kenny Holtzman made the start for the Cubs, took the loss at 0-3 with McLaughlin in the fourth, Geisel and Moore both in the eighth inning of play. Jose Cardinal of the Phillies hit his second home run in the third with one man on, and then Mike Vale of the Cubs, formerly of the Indians, hit his first in the seventh with two men on. Two hours and 59 minutes, 25,934 at Rigby Field, watching the Phillies edge the Cubs 6-5. to five. St. Louis and Montreal playing two games in Montreal. The Cardinals with a four-run sixth inning overhauled Montreal five to four. Five runs, nine hits, one error for St. Louis. Four runs, five hits, no errors for Montreal. Pete Vukovic, the starter and winner, he's six and five. Latell in the seventh, Schultz in the eighth, and uh, Buddy Schultz picked up his fourth save. Woody Freeman started for Montreal. Freeman takes the loss at three and six with Garmin in the sixth and Bonson in the eighth. Ted Simmons of the Cardinals at his ninth of the fourth with nobody on. The second game is in the sixth inning of play. St. Louis and Montreal are tied up 2-2. Urea against May. That first game, by the way, took two hours and 40 minutes. The weatherman took the game in Pittsburgh today. The Pirates and the New York Mets rained out. A wild one in Atlanta. The Braves with four in the fifth and four more in the seventh knocked off the Giants 9-7. Nine runs, 12 hits, one error for Atlanta. Seven runs, ten hits, one error for the Giants. Phil Necro, the starter and winner, he's nine and nine. Gene Garber came on in the eighth inning and picked up his fifth save. Fida Blue started for the Giants, was roughed up today. Randy Moffitt came in in the seventh inning, and he was the loser at six and four. Johnny LaMaster of the Giants hit his first and the fourth with nobody on. Big Dale Murphy of Atlanta hit his ninth and the fifth with the bases loaded. Jack Clark of the Giants hit his 14th and the seventh with one man on. Two hours, 14 minutes, 13,588. Watched Atlanta outscore the Giants 9-7. Cincinnati with a four-run seventh inning outscored the Dodgers 7-6. Seven, seven runs, 11 hits, one error for Cincinnati. Six runs, 14 hits, and no errors for Los Angeles. The starter was Bill Bonham, Pedro Bourbon in the fifth inning, and Doug Bear in the seventh, and he is the winner at 2-3. and three. Doug Rouse started for the Dodgers, took the loss. He's 8-4 with Huff in the seventh and Robson in the eighth. Two home runs for Cincinnati decided the issue. Rick Auerbach hit his second in the seventh with nobody on, and then George Foster hit his 17th in the seventh with two men on. Two hours and 31 minutes of baseball, plus a 56-minute rain delay in the fifth inning. The crowd in Cincinnati of 46,067 watched Cincinnati rally to beat the Dodgers 7-6, and salvage the final game of that four-game set, ending a losing streak at six straight. Meanwhile, Gaylord Perry wins again. Gaylord today knocked off Houston, 6-2 to two down in the Astrodome. Six runs, eight hits, and two errors for San Diego. Two runs, six hits, no errors for Houston. Gaylord Perry all the way to win. He is 9-3. and three. Dixon made the start for Houston, took the loss at 4-4 four and four with Joe Sambito in the eighth. Tucker Ashford of San Diego hit his fifth and the fourth, nobody on. Turner of the Padres hit his third in the eighth with nobody on. Two hours and 48 minutes, and a crowd in the Astrodome of 14,737 watched as the Padres beat Houston 6-2. to two. We'll take a look at the American League after we take this time out. If your business has traditionally depended on print advertising, here are some hard facts. Since 1967, average daily newspaper circulation has failed to keep up with the growth of the population. But average cost per thousand has almost doubled. Now the radio facts. Since 1967, radio's audience is up a big 61%, but cost rose only moderately. That means radio is right on the button with a lot more for your money than print. Ask the station for more details. A message from the Radio Advertising Bureau. The tenth inning. A wrap of today's Cleveland Indians baseball game and scores from around the league. Is brought to you after every Cleveland Indians baseball game here on 3WJ. The tenth inning and Cleveland Indians baseball are a part of 3WJ's total sports presentation. Good league. 
League, the New York Yankees trying to sweep a doubleheader from the Detroit Tigers. The first game went to the Yankees, 3-2. Three, three runs, eight hits, two errors for New York. Two runs, six hits, one error for Detroit. Ron Guidry, the starter and winner, he's 13-0. Gossage came on in the ninth inning and picked up the save. Dave Rosema started for Detroit with John Hiller in the seventh, and Hiller, the loser, he is 6-4. and four. Jason Thompson of Detroit at his 18th home run in the third with nobody on. The second game is in the home half of the eighth inning, and the Yankees lead again 3-2. Jim Slayton has gone all the way for the Detroit Tigers. Rajic started for the Yankees with Sparky Lyle in the fifth. All three Yankee runs came on Craig Nettles' 14th home run of the year in the third, and two men on. The Minnesota Twins of the Chicago White Sox are playing with wild abandon in Minnesota today. The first game went to the White Sox, 8-5. Eight, eight runs, 13 hits, no errors for the White Sox. Five runs, seven hits, and five Minnesota errors. The starter and winner for the White Sox, Wilbur Wood, now 9-5. Willoughby came out of the eighth inning and picked up his tenth save. Jeff Zahn started for Minnesota, took the loss at 7-6 with Sutton in the third and Harrison in the ninth. Bilnar Rodney of the White Sox hit his second and a seventh in the second with nobody on. Roy Smalley of Minnesota hit his eighth in the second with nobody on. And then Bombo Rivera hit his second and the eighth with two men on to close the gap for the Twins, but they couldn't quite close it enough. In two hours, 46 minutes for the opener, the White Sox eight, Minnesota five. In the nightcap, they are in the sixth inning of play, and Minnesota leads six to five. Jackson started for Minnesota. Mike Marshall has come on in the fifth inning of play. Ron Schuler started for the White Sox with Hinton in the second. Rob Wilfong of Minnesota hit his first in the second with one man on. Eric Soderholm of the White Sox hit his eighth in the fourth with nobody on. Boston at Baltimore, that single game rained out. Kansas City has won the first of two at Oakland, 4-2, to two, with a four-run eighth inning. Four runs, 11 hits, one error for Kansas City. Two runs, eight hits, and one error for Oakland. Larry Gora, the winner in the route, Gorey, 6-2. Langford started for Oakland, Haverlow and Lacey in the eighth, and Lacey takes the loss. He's six and four. Mitchell Page at the game's only home run for Oakland, his ninth in the eighth with nobody on. Kansas City and Oakland now will play a second game after the 229 opener. In California, they are in the ninth. Texas and California are tied up three and three. Ellis started for the Rangers with Comer in the seventh. Brett started for the Angels with Griffin in the third and Miller in the seventh. Richie Zisk of Texas hit his 13th in the second with nobody on, and Bobby Thompson of the Rangers hit his second in the fourth with nobody on. Milwaukee and Seattle are tied up, 2-2 at the end of five. Called well against Pohl, Tom Pachorek of Seattle hit his first home run in the American League in the fifth inning with nobody on. All of which brings us to our doubleheader here in Toronto. In the first game, it was Cleveland two runs, seven hits, no errors. Toronto no runs, three hits, and one error. Rick Waits, the starter and winner, he's 6-8, and eight, and Jim Kern came on to get the final out of the ninth inning and pick up his seventh save. Dave Lomanchuk took the loss. His record is 2-10. and ten. One home run turned out to be the game winner. Gary Alexander hit his 16 in the second with nobody on. And uh, before we look at the nightcap, let me update a couple of games for you. The White Sox have failed in the sixth inning at Minnesota, so the Twins still lead there 6-5 to five in the second game. But George Hendrick of the St. Louis Cardinals has just clobbered a home run for the Cardinals. He uh, hit his seventh in the sixth with a man on, and that two runs give St. Louis a 4-2 to two lead over Montreal at the end of six innings of the second game after the Cardinals had won the ball game, the opener. And uh, now a final. The Yankees came up with Oh, my, look at this. Detroit got a run on the ninth to tie the ball game at 3-3, and the Yankees scored two times in the last of the ninth inning, and Gary Thomason's seventh home run with a man on won it for the New York Yankees, and so the Yankees sweep the Tigers today. In that second game for Detroit, three runs, 12 hits, and no errors, and for the Yankees, five runs on only six hits and no errors. The losing pitcher is Slayton, who is now at 8-5. and five. There were two home runs in the ball game, and they accounted for all the Yankee runs. The winner was Gossage, so Gossage had a busy day. He saved the first game and came back to win the nightcap. He is 4-7. and seven. The uh, earlier home run was a Nettles blast, his 14th, with two men on. And then Gary Thomason, in the last half of the ninth inning, hits his 
seventh home run of the year. He, of course, started the year in Oakland. Thomason with his seventh home run in the ninth and one man on. It took two hours and 24 minutes for the nightcap and a crowd in New York today of 50,449. Yankees sweeping the Tigers 3-2, to 5-3. to three. And out on the West Coast, they're cooking right along. The Milwaukee Brewers just came up with a run in the sixth. And Caldwell has kept Seattle from scoring anymore. And with Seattle batting in the eighth inning of play, it is Milwaukee 3 and Seattle 2. Now back to our second game of the doubleheader. It was Toronto 3 runs, 7 hits, no errors. Cleveland 1, 4 and 0. Oh. Jesse Jefferson all the way to win. He's 6 and 7. Dave Friesleben, the starter and loser at zip and 2 with Manji in the 6th. Filner in the 7th. Larvel Blanks hit the Indians' only home run of the second game. His first in the 6th with nobody on. Two hours, ten minutes for the nightcap. A doubleheader crowd of 28,305 in Toronto. Watching the Indians win the first game 2 to nothing. The Blue Jays the nightcap 3 to 1. So we invite you to be with us tomorrow night at the stadium. 7.35 family night. The Orioles and the Indians with a fireworks game coming Tuesday night at 7.35 with the Birds. Thanks to our engineers, Jack Lowe here in Toronto, Jack Fiorelli and Dale Cogis in Cleveland. And of course, thanks most of all to you for listening. For Herb Score, this is Joe Tate. Have a good night, everybody.